We are almost ready to begin. There are copies of the agenda up here up front. We'd also ask you to sign in, and if you plan on speaking on any of the agenda items, just indicate which one that you're going to be speaking on. Thanks. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Somerville Licensing Commission for October 21st, 2019. I'm Chair and Commissioner Joe Lynch, and with me tonight is Commissioner Christopher Allen. Unfortunately, our third commissioner cannot attend, John McKenna. Also joining me is Ch uh, City Secretary and Clerk for the Somerville Licensing Commission, Lori Batsick. Uh, representing the Somerville Fire Department, to the right of Commissioner Allen is Lieutenant Bob McLaughlin, and to his right is representing the Somerville Police Department is Sergeant Warren Shaley. Please be advised that this public here this is a public hearing and it is being recorded, telecast live, and is what live streaming on the government website. Um, before I begin, are there any members of the media present tonight? Good, thank you. Before we begin, I'd also like to acknowledge the Council President, Katiana Ballantyne, Ward 3 Councilor Ben Ewan Campen. Both are in the chamber tonight. Uh, sorry? Mark Niedegang came in after the fact. There he is, Councilor Niedegang. I want to thank uh, President Ballantyne for allowing us to use your chamber tonight. So there are some city staff that are also joining us um, in the event that we need their assistance on at least three items that are on the agenda. The city staff present are mostly seated in the front row here. Their um, assistant city solicitor, David Shapiro, Director Doug Kress from the Health Department, uh, Deputy Chief Carabino from the Somerville Police Department, and Alex Mello from the Office of Community Development. Um, if you bear with me, I do have one announcement that I want to make uh, before we begin with the agenda items. On October 7th, the city clerk forwarded a request to publish notice of a public hearing for items number 2, 3, 4, and 27 to the Somerville Times to be published on October 9th. On October 16th, the City Clerk's Office was informed that due to an administrative error by the Somerville Times, the publication did not occur. The Commission intends to go forward on the applications this evening. We will take public comment and testimony, but we will not deliberate or vote on the applications at this hearing. 
The records, therefore, will be kept open until the next meeting, which is scheduled for November 18th. On that date, the public hearing will reconvene, at which time the Commission is expected to deliberate and vote. All other items on tonight's agenda will be uh, heard, deliberated, and hopefully voted on. The public is always welcome to make public comment, and we respectfully request that you limit your comments to under two minutes. Uh, the city clerk is up behind over my right shoulder, John Long. There is a buzzer and indicates when you've exceeded. Because there are, is not an overflow crowd here tonight, I, at the, my discretion, I may allow you to continue. That does not apply to the applicants or the designated attorneys. Um, again, we will continue to accept written comments on the four items I mentioned earlier. Those items, again, were item two, three, four, and 27. So, back to the agenda items. Uh, item number one is acceptance of the minutes Acceptance of the minutes of September, 20, of September 16, 2019. Commissioner Allen, questions on the minutes? Nope. No questions. Move for mo uh, make a motion to accept the minutes of 2019, uh, September 19, 2019. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Item number two. Um, before we begin, though, I would like to invite um, City Council President Katiana Ballantyne to make a statement to the Commission on behalf of the City Council of the City of Somerville. Welcome, President Ballantyne. Good evening. I am Katiana Ballantyne, City Council President and Ward 7 City Councilor, serving as Acting Mayor for the Host Community Agreement process for marijuana retail entities. I'd like to thank the Commission for the diligence in these proceedings and for hearing my statements as acting mayor in this capacity. As you know, adult use marijuana was approved in Massachusetts in a 2016 ballot question. The question was approved with the majority of the vote statewide, 53.6%, and by what could be called a supermajority in Somerville a total of 73.6% of ballots cast in Somerville were in favor. Along with the assiduous efforts of the administration, the city council, and the city planning staff, it has been the duty of the Marijuana Advisory Committee to help fulfill the mandate given to us by our electorate. That mandate is to develop and pursue local regulations and fair process to establish the safe and responsible introduction of adult use marijuana retail in our community. Since the state law permits a mayor to determine which applicants should be permitted to enter into a host community agreement, the Marijuana Advisory Committee was created to advise the mayor or in this case, advise me as acting mayor, and determine which applicants should move forward through the review process. The Marijuana Advisory Committee, which I will henceforth refer to as the MAC, conducted a careful and thorough review of the 15 applications for host community agreements received in this first application round. Three adult use marijuana retail applicants were selected to sign an agreement and to be recommended to the Licensing Commission for approval for an adult use marijuana license. The MAC will soon review, begin review of a second round of applicants. The first round entities recommended by the MAC and their proposed locations are Union Leaf at 71 Union Square, New England Select Harvest at 378 380 Highland Avenue, and East Coast Remedies at 76 to 82 Central Street. I have accepted the MAC's recommendations, and we are entering into a host community agreement with each applicant. According to the criteria delineated in Section 2.221 of the City Code of Ordinances, and additionally codified by the MAC, priority applicants were identified based on 
upon a number of factors to ensure these facilities will best serve our community. As required by ordinance, applicants were reviewed first for their demonstrated compliance with the laws and regulations of the Commonwealth and the City of Somerville, consistency to our community values outlined in Summer Vision, and thoroughness of response to the application requirements. Specific criteria evaluated by the MAC included ensuring that proposed locations were compatible with their respective neighborhoods, that the physical space allowed for safe storage and flow of customers, that operations included a focus of community involvement and education in keeping with the Massachusetts Cannabis Control Commission's Economic Empowerment Program and the local ordinance. The MAC was permitted to recommend only applicants in two priority groups. A strong priority review by the MAC was also to, to the extent to which the person or persons running the entity has or have been disproportionately impacted by the marijuana prohibition and the war on drugs. Preference was also given to entities where the majority of the ownership is made up of individuals who are Somerville residents. These two groups are Category A applicants. And each of these applicants before you tonight are Category A applicants that have been vetted by the MAC to ensure that they meet the spirit and the letter of the local ordinance. The MAC was also permitted to recommend Category B applicants in the first round. Category B applicants are our current medical marijuana dispensaries in Somerville. They may be granted host community agreements, but the ordinance requires that at least half of the licenses issued be issued to applicants in Category A. Nonetheless, the MAC recommended only Category A applicants in this first round. The three selected entities best met the prescribed criteria for priority applicants. Union Leaf is both a Somerville resident owned and an immigrant owned business owner, Lakshmi Pradham, has past experience operating businesses in highly regulated industries. The Union Leaf proposal includes redeveloping the 71 Union Square site to include a three-story building for its retail operations, offices, and a community space. The team includes a community engagement specialist with UN experience. The New England Select Harvest is a majority owned by Robert Gregory, who is a longtime Somerville resident and the owner of a well-managed local business, Red's Bones. The New England Select Harvest team includes an experienced and knowledgeable cannabis partner from Maine and provided clear community education and partnership goals. The East Coast Remedies is majority owned by Gladys Vega and is thus a woman-owned, immigrant-owned, and economic empowerment-owned business. Ms. Vega, who is, an, is the executive director of the Chelsea Collaborative, has lived in Chelsea for over 41 years and has experienced the impacts of the war on drugs on her family and community. She has dedicated her life work to help combat socioeconomic challenges in her community. Again, these recommendations are the first local entitlements among others required for establishing adult use marijuana retail location in Somerville. Respectfully, in the service to the will of the Somerville voters, I submit our recommendations to the Licensing Commission for your review. Thank you. Thank you very much, President Ballantyne. Commissioner Allen, do you have any questions you, you want to proceed? We will proceed. Item number two, East Coast Remedies Corp, 76 to 82 Central Street, requesting approval for a Group A priority new marijuana retail license. Hours of operation, Sunday through Saturday, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Welcome, Councillor. If you could state your name for the record, please. Uh, good evening, uh, members of the Commission. Rich DiGirolamo, 424 Broadway, Somerville. On behalf of the applicant East Coast Remedies Corp, joined by Gladys Vega, who's the president of East Coast 
Remedies Corp. Um, at this time, Mr. Chairman, uh, we, due to scheduling conflicts, trying to schedule a community meeting, uh, we have not had an opportunity to do so, and we are now scheduled to do that meeting, uh, but we feel it's more, it would be more fruitful to have that meeting prior to our presentation before your board. That, that meeting is now scheduled to occur a week from tonight on October 28th. Uh, at the Somerville High School Auditorium at 6.30 p.m. So uh, we would respectfully request that your commission um, continue this matter uh, until the November 18th Licensing Board Commission meeting. Thank you, Councillor. Ms. Becker, would you like to say something before we continue? I think um, I would love for you guys to allow us to continue as we're meeting on October 28th with all the residents in that area. Thank you. Thank you very much. Commissioner Allen, do you have any questions? Okay. Thank you to the applicant. All set, Rich? Yes, thank you. Um, need to hear from members of the public. Is there any member, any member of the public who wishes to be heard on the application? Seeing none, I'm gonna ask uh, Councillor Ben Ewan Campen to step forward. We do have written testimony from Councillor Ewan Campen. Councillor, we, we have it in our packet. You don't have to repeat everything you said in your communication to us, but you're afforded the opportunity to speak. Thank you very much, members of the commission. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. So I did submit a written comment uh, seconding this request to postpone the public hearing and the deliberations until we've had a community meeting. And just for the record, uh, I've received probably around 30 emails at this point from residents. So I do think that there are gonna be a lot of questions. Um, that I hope that we can begin to address at the community meeting. Great. Thank you very much, Councillor Ewan Camp. And Councillor Nita Gang, because this will, may affect part of your ward, I received written comments from you as well. Would you like to say something about it? Uh, just to second what Councillor Ewan Camp has said, he's taking lead on this, and I also want to have the community meeting before it comes before your body. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councillor? Yeah, I think in, in uh, prior discussion, we had discussed that since it is my intention as commission chair to have the public f duly noticed of the time, place, and uh, uh, date of these hearings, that we are gonna continue the case at your request until November 18th. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Varga. Item number three is Union Leaf Inc., 71 to 72 Union Square, requesting approval of a Group A priority new marijuana retail license. Hours of operation Monday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 8 p.m., and Sunday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Welcome, please state your name for the record. Mr. Chairman, my name is Walter Sullivan. I represent Union Leaf. Uh, we're seeking a marijuana retail establishment license for 71, 72 Union Square in Union Square. Um, with me, I have the owners of Union Leaf, uh, Greg Santos. He owns 5% of the business, lacks me. Pradhan owns 95%. He could not be here, but his son is here. Um, and they will speak about the business itself. We have uh, Peter Grillo, who will speak about the products being sold and explain more about how a marijuana retail establishment operates. Rick Nagel is here to talk about security. He's a former member of the Massachusetts State Police. Uh, we held a community outreach meeting on the 9th. It was posted in the Somerville News on the 1st and on the 8th, uh, mailed out to residents within 300 feet, and we delivered flyers within 300 feet. With that being said, I'll let Greg start off. Thanks, Walter. Um, first of all, I wanna thank a number of people in the room uh, for getting us to this point. Um, thank you, uh, Chairman Lynch, Commissioner Allen, um, and all the members of the City Council who are currently present for helping us work through this um, very new challenge. Um, it's been uh, a little, it felt a little daunting at first, but now I think we're off to a pretty good start. Um, I wanna talk to you about um, 71 Union Square, uh, where it currently stands and where we hope to take it in the very near future. Um, Union Square is definitely going through um, a time of change. 
uh, and we want to fit into this neighborhood that is changing. And one of the things that is going to be changing is the uh, physical presence of 71 Union Square. What we've promised to the city at this point is a complete redevelopment of the building into a three-story structure with a basement. It's currently the home of Union Square Beer and Wine, which Mr. Pradhan and his family have owned and operated for a period of years now. Before that, they've owned this building for, I think, over 20 years. Uh, it was a convenience store and a subway along the way. Um, but as Union Square has changed, um, we, we hope to change the, the nature of this business as well. Um, to give you an idea of what we're going to be doing with the physical structure, the basement is going to be a secured facility where we, we will hold product. Um, the first floor, and only the first floor, will be retail space. The second story will be a community space that we will primarily use for our educational purposes, but uh, as well, we will allow any uh, community organizations who, um, who want to have some open um, space in Union Square come use our space when it is available. Um, we're hoping that's you know, a lot of evenings and weekends. Um, one of the things we noticed about Union Square um, while going through this process is there's a lack of community spaces in that particular neighborhood and in the square, so we hope to provide that as a benefit to the community. The third story of the building is going to be reserved for offices for the retail business. Um, one of the things that we want to prioritize and we consider our first priority is safety and security. And we've brought onto our team a really great expert in Rick Nagel. And Rick's going to talk you through some of the safety measures um, and best practices. Um, so I'll, I'll leave that to Rick, but I just want everybody to know that that is certainly our first priority. Um, you know, in everything from planning security cameras to cash sweeps, I mean, we're taking a serious look at this. Um, we also want to be a very good neighbor to all our neighboring businesses. Um, primarily in our location, we're looking at a number of bars and restaurants, and we want to make sure that we're supporting them because we rely on them as neighbors, and they, uh, they will, in turn, hopefully rely on us in some ways. Um, and we hope to promote them in a number of different ways. Um, in addition to hopefully offering some kind of discount for using public transit, we're hoping to prom cross promote with other businesses in the area where, for example, you could take a receipt from the independent um, where you had dinner and bring it over and we'll give you a discount uh, on product if, if and when we are allowed to do that by the CCC regulations. So we're really looking to install ourselves in the neighborhood and be high quality neighbors. And I think if you look at Mr. Pradhan's past, he, he currently owns four liquor stores, owns and operates four liquor stores, and plus he has a restaurant that has a liquor license. So he's very um, able in, his, um, in, in, his, in the way he runs his businesses, his highly regulated businesses, and we believe that um, you know, this business is fairly analogous to running liquor stores. Um, so Mr. Pradhan's also a very valued member of his community. He gives back both in, in terms of his time and his financial resources. And you know, some of that was uh, discussed uh, at length with the MAC and um, provided as well in our, uh, in our application. Um, one of the things we're going to put an emphasis on, because this is such a new industry and a new undertaking, is education. Education is very important in this industry. Uh, and as it, as it grows and matures, uh, there might be less requirements for that. But as we get started, um, we, we have brought on um, one outside marijuana educator, and that person will be holding regular classes on a variety of topics in our community space. We've also brought on Peter Grillo, who's, uh, who's our product expert, and he'll spend a little time talking with you about the products that are going to be offered. But um, needless to say, I think we have um, a really excellent team with a lot of knowledge, uh, and we hope to impart that on our neighbors and on our community. Um, I had mentioned transit briefly before, but one of the things the MAC considered as one of its priorities was location. And I think um, we've proven to them that uh, our location is pretty ideal. It's in a very commercial area. We're surrounded by businesses. We don't have residential. Um, we don't have residential neighbors right next to us. So um, our location is, is great. Transit, uh, the, the options are good and getting better. We're about to have a green line stop right at our doorstep. 
Um, we, we currently have many bus lines that run through, uh, and uh, certainly it's you know Union Square, so it's 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 a it's a major square in the city, and pedestrians are welcome to walk up to our shop as well. Um, so uh, one thing we're going to encourage is that our customers don't drive to our store. We're going to post this on our website. We're going to get that message out um, as, as much as we can. Uh, Union Square is difficult to access by car anyway, but um, the, uh, the, certainly the parking situation um, in the neighborhood is not ideal. So we're going to certainly encourage our customers however we can to avoid, uh, to avoid driving. Um, we, we plan on matching the hours of operation of Liberty, which is right down the street and operates uh, a, a similar cannabis business. Uh, those hours are 10 to 8 every day except Sunday, which we uh, are looking at 12 to 5. Um, and we will adjust those according to our neighbor's wishes as we move forward. Um, one of the things we're going to um, dedicate as a resource is a community liaison. Uh, and our community liaison will be a single point of contact between everybody inside our business and everybody outside our business. So we make sure that communication, um, that method of communication is well understood and uh, we make sure there's no mixed messages um, going into our business or out of it. Um, and we intend on listening to our neighbors' feedback because for everyone this is a new, this is a new project and um, we want to make sure we do it the right way. Um, one of the big tenets of our store is going to be our customer pledge. And our customer pledge um, is going to be a requirement if you want to be a customer of our store. So when you enter our facility, our retail facility, one of the first things that happens is that you get your ID checked. You have to be over 21. We're going to have a scanner, a very high-tech scanner that Rick can tell you about that um, recognizes all types of IDs. Um, and then during that process, if you haven't already been to our shop, you'll be asked to sign our customer pledge. And while we're still working on building out that content, we plan on sharing that with um, uh, some members of the city council and some neighbors to make sure that we're getting that right. And that pledge um, basically requires that um, anyone coming to us as a customer is going to be not only uh, a good customer in our shop, but a good customer who acts correctly and properly around our neighbors. because. We want to avoid things like um, loitering, like product use outside of our store. Uh, and if you violate, so, so far the consensus is if you violate our, uh, our, our pledge even one time, um, we don't wish to have you as a customer, customer anymore. So we're really trying to set all the expectations up front and do this the right way. So I want to leave you with this. Um, we want to treat our neighboring business, our neighbor, our neighbor businesses, and our residential businesses with the respect that they deserve. We're a new business. This is a new industry, and we are looking to um, receive as much feedback and respond appropriately uh, when possible. Um, again, I, I, I really want to note that our priority is safety and security. Um, I'm going to let. Uh, Binoj Pradhan, uh, speak next uh, on behalf of his father, who is the applicant. Uh, but then at some point, Rick Nagel will tell you about the safety and security. And uh, thank you, and we hope to run a high quality and sustainable business. Thank you, Mr. Santos. Certainly. If we can just enter it into the record for us, Laurie, thank you. Hi, Good everyone. evening. Good evening. Um, my name is Binoz Pradhan. I'm the son. Um, my father couldn't be here because of the emergency he had, so he had to leave the country immediately. Um, so I'll be talking on behalf. Um, basically, um, me and my family, we immigrated to the United States back in 1999, and we moved to Somerville. Somerville is like uh, the first home that we immigrated here. Worked a couple of years in Somerville. Uh, my mom worked in Somerville. My father worked in Somerville. I worked in Somerville. And then we decided to open our first business which was in Union Square, where we're actually proposing. I was 18 years old when I was the first young franchisee for Subway. And me and my family, we opened this Subway restaurant in Union Square. At the time, uh, the broker who actually listed the property said the Green Line was coming. And we are looking forward to that. And we were like, oh, you know what? Opening a Subway would be a best idea because Green Line is coming. And that was 20 years ago. Um, even till today, we haven't seen Green Line. I already closed my subway business because I lost the post office. They were my biggest customer. Then I lost the motorcycle place, which was right across the, they were my regular customers. 
Um, so it's been a rough ride for us in Union Square. Um, but then we had other hopes. We opened another business in Tilt Square called Masala. Uh, we've been there for seven years. It's a full restaurant with liquor license. And then our family, every time you know, we accumulate a little bit of wealth, we invest in Somerville. Um, we bought the property uh, across the, from Masala, which is the, the famous hole in the ground, and we're looking to put a hotel there. Um, we are right now with ISD getting our building permit to build a hotel. Uh, currently, I employ about 30 uh, summer residents. Most of them, 90% are summer residents. In the hotel, the whole goal of the hotel is also to hire local residents for the hotel as well. And also for this business, we're also looking to hire first summer residents. Um, not by paying minim, uh, minimum wage, but by paying living wages. That's our commitment to the city. And I would forward this mic to our product manager. Very good. Thank you. All set? Thank you, Mr. Pradhan. Welcome. Welcome. Good evening, Council. Uh, my name is Peter Grillo. I'm the product expert for Union Leaf. <clears throat> I'm also the owner of Mr. Green Thumb Holistic Solutions in Sanford, Maine. It's a 22,000 square foot indoor grow facility. Um, I've been a participant in the Maine Medical Marijuana Program since 2006 and I have significant experience in the cultivation and distribution of medical marijuana in Maine. Um, if you have any questions about our product catalog or anything like that, I'm here to answer those. Well, good. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. One more time, if you could just introduce yourself. My name is Rick Nagel. I'm a retired detective lieutenant with the Massachusetts State Police. I served over 31 years. Um, first of all, my colleagues asked why did I get involved with this. Um, they said it's sort of contrary to what we did. But my view is this. Um, this is not coming to Massachusetts. It's here. We need to turn our backs and hope it's done right to be part of the process. So I decided to be part of the process since day one, a number of years back. Uh, my background um, with the State Police most of my career, I was a homicide detective. Um, then I was in charge of unsolved murders for the cold case unit with the Massachusetts State Police. We investigated cases going back 40 years. I was elected during my career um, to investigate all our evidence, narcotics evidence in Massachusetts um, State Police is stored in one locale, and that's General Headquarters in Framingham. And it was compromised. Millions of dollars of narcotics were stolen. So yet they elected six of us to go figure this thing out. As a result of that, not only did we arrest someone, we also investigated every state police barracks in the state, every district courthouse in the state, superior court, attorney general's office. We changed policy and procedure for the entire state and how you handle, secure, transport, and destruct evidence. So with that experience, if you will, um, I was called uh, um, by back when it first started by a business and asked me if I'd be a security consultant. And I've been doing this ever since. Um, the oversight is the Cannabis Commission. Um, I tell them if they're gonna hire me, I'm gonna be more stringent than the Cannabis Commission. Um, I'm familiar with the CMRs, but um, what I am, uh, imply and what I suggest is that we're gonna be a little bit more um, strict. What does that mean? Um, in regards to Union Square and their establishment, um, we, you know, we're, con we're going to be conscious about loitering. We're going to have cameras. Um, there are going to be minimum of 35 cameras in this place. And um, when I interview these uh, businesses, uh, I know I've been involved with a number of bank robberies and I couldn't identify my next door neighbor if I saw them because the pictures are all grainy. Um, so what I ask is I want to see your cameras. And they tell me that not only are you going to recognize someone's face, you're going to be able to read anything on their jacket or anything like that. That's how good these cameras are going to be. So that's comfortable. That's next question I ask them, if we have a camera that breaks down on a Monday, I don't want to wait to Thursday to have this camera fixed. We would like it fixed forthwith, and they tell us that it will. So I'm comfortable with that. Um, we're also going to have glass break detectors, um, motions. Almost every company that comes in here is going to tell you this. But I think what's in, it's a highly regulated industry. But I, what I want to bring to the table is there's two parts of security. There's physical, which is everything that's mandated, glass break detectors and so forth and so on, cameras. But there's also operational security, and that's what I want to stress. And what does that mean? That means constant training. That means constant oversight. 
That means constant audits. And this is what you need to do in any business that you're in. You need to have constant training. And that's what I hope uh, in, they said they would do in, re in regards to the security. Um, in the past, I have put out um, who's going to work there in regards to security. Um, throughout the state, I have a number of resumes. Um, I haven't uh, reached out in the Somerville area, but I have a number of resumes in southeastern Mass and western Mass from retired uh, public safety police, fire, FBI, corrections, etc. People who are highly qualified in the um, public sector. Um, they, what I suggest, we talk about minor diversions, seems to be a hot button topic, which it should be. If minors come in, how are you going to prevent that? And one of the ways you do that and has been successful is with ID scanners. They're pretty, uh, they're pretty good in nowadays. How, the scanners they would use is the same scanners that the Federal Reserve Bank uses, Massport uses, um, Green Airport uses, Department of Justice uses. So it's pretty high tech. If you look at your license now since 9-11, there's so many changes on a, normal, uh, on a license that wasn't that way um, prior to 9-11. And um, that's a good thing. So it's very hard to do a fraudulent ID this day. These ID scanners will pick up um, fake IDs in all 50 states. So uh, it's a pretty good. And if I had one uh, meeting where someone asked me, well, what happens if it's a passport from another country? And I've said in other meetings, um, it, it, your volition, you can say no. Well, we, you know, we're not comfortable with that ID and not let them in. So um, also, I, I think what you need to know is that the product at the end of the night, and hopefully everyone who comes before you will be doing the same thing, is that it'll be in a vault. So if someone happens to break into this establishment, they're going to break in, again, alarms, motion detectors, glass break detectors. Um, they're going to be caught on camera. And once, if they do get in, there isn't anything there. It's all in a vault. And for them to get through that vault, they better bring a lunch because it's going to take them quite a while to get through that vault. Um, and uh, it would be quite a feat for them to, um, to get that product. And um, again, you understand these dispensaries. It's not a cultivation site. Cultivation site, um, remember this, is where most of the product is. They request a product that comes for the day. They may just get a one-day supply, a two-day supply. So these dispensaries aren't going to have a quantity of product also, what I like to express, it's highly regulated. And I tell this to people that, um, you know, we have to have security high, but we get more dangerous drugs in CVS than we do in these dispensaries. Um, and, and it's not as regulated as much as um, these dispensaries are. I'm glad it is. Um, and they are, uh, I, I like the security plan, uh, and um, I give them my input, and uh, thank God that they, they listen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Thank you very much. Mr. Chairman, I forgot to mention that we also have our traffic consultant here, but just to answer questions if you have, if you have any. And Richard DiGirolamo, of course, is here if you have any questions. Yeah, I think we're going to defer um, on the traffic questions. Um, as you know, you may or may not have to re um, satisfy requirements of the ZBA and or planning folks. So we're just we're going to let that rest for a little bit. Um, Pretty much done with the presentation at this We're point? We're done, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Any questions, Commissioner Allen? Yes. I have a, a question for your security consultant. Um, you talked about holding yourselves to a higher standard than the Cannabis Control Commission, which I think so far have already proved themselves to not be slouches when it comes to enforcement and um, investigations. Um, they've already had several actions against retailers and uh, manufacturers. What lessons have you learned and are going to apply to this business from those actions that they've taken so far? First of all, I think they're excellent. Um, I, I, I'm very pleased on what they're doing. Um, what I suggest a lot is, for instance, if I read a policy, what I'm suggesting, I'll give you an example, um, what you're asking, let's say transportation of product. Um, they'll have procedures, our procedures will be a little bit more strict. What does that mean? That means um, Cannabis Commission says you weigh the product before you leave, you're going to weigh it when you get there. Um, random routes and all that. We're going to have many forms of communication. We're going to have um, logs. We're going to have um, security procedures before you leave. There's going to be a checklist. 
So uh, I'm very pleased with the Cannabis Commission, but what I like to do is add a layer or two of security. It's no reflection on them, it's just maybe I'm anal. Uh, just a little, you know, sometimes people roll their eyes, but that's, uh, ounce of prevention's worth the pound of cure, in my opinion. So I'd rather go that extra step. Little things like check your vehicle. You know, you're gonna be responsible if someone says, gee, the tire was compromised. Well, how do you know? Meeting with the chief of police or the police department. I'm meeting with them several times during the um, building process. That's not mandated. Um, I want to meet with them. How are we going to stop the vehicles? How are the people trained when a police officer comes up to the, to the vehicle? Do they leave the vehicle? Do they stay in the vehicle? Um, this isn't really explicit in, in the policy and procedure. So I want to train them what to do. What happens if detectives stop you? What do you do when a detective stops you? How do you know it's a detective and it's not a, it's not a fake? And someone's pulling you over in a, a Crown Victoria. Well, that's what it used to be back then. And how do you know they're police officers? So these are the things that need to be trained, that, um, the ex extra layer, and that's what I'm talking about. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my next question was on the community space. Um, I looked at the blueprints in your application, but it's been a little bit. Um, is that community? Is that is that community space? Would that be available for all ages, or would that have to be 21 and up? No, it's going to have to be 21 and up. Um, you know, just even though there are going to be two separate entrances, one for the retail space and one uh, additional entrance for everything else in the building, the second and third floors, um, it, it, it's going to have to be 21 and up. You're going to get your ID checked on the way in. Cool. Thank you. Um, sure. I do think that's a valuable contribution, though, even with that necessary student uh, limitation. Uh, no further questions. You good? Uh, security. Come on back up. Uh, my question is, are you a consultant that is um, certified in any way for this new business? Or are you a consultant in the general security sense? Well, I think, uh, you know, how do you get uh, stamped in the papal blessing in being a um, bona fide expertise, if you will? And that's why I mentioned my past experience, um, which I had prior to, and I've been involved with this since, what, 2013? Um, and, and I've been involved with probably over 20 of these cultivation, dispensary, transportation companies in regards to advising them uh, on security procedures. So is that an expertise? That's like if I'm in court. How are you an expertise in homicide? I, well, I don't know. I've been doing it a long time. Well, I guess, I guess from the standpoint of expert witnesses have to be classified as an expert witness. Does the CCC require you to have any kind of certification to be a security consultant in this industry? No, no. I, I've chatted with them, though, and we, we've gone back and forth at the, you know, as places we're going to open or they're in the process of opening, but no. Um, it, matter of fact, I met with them before they were CCC. Was it the Department of Public Health prior to CCC? Correct. Um, and I chatted with them at, at length at different um, venues, if you will. Have most of your uh, cons consultancy been done in Massachusetts or in Maine? Never in, all in Massachusetts. All in Massachusetts. All in, I've, I've never been out of state. Okay. I've concurred out of state prior to doing this. I called almost every state that was involved with the business prior to Massachusetts to ask about their security. So I called Maine, Arizona, um, California, Colorado. I wanted to chat with the police departments. I also wanted to monitor crimes throughout the United States. So I have on my phone Google Alerts. So I want to know every time there's a crime, I want to know what happened. So um, I have been monitoring that probably for the last four or five, maybe longer than that, just to know what's going on out there and so I can tell them what some of the issues are in regards to crime in these facilities. Okay. For, for the novice here, I do follow stuff, but can you, can you tell me where you think one of the major failure points is in the seed to sale process that we have now in this state? The process of monitoring from seed to sale? Seed to sale, yeah. Well, I, I think first is to make sure that the seed is here in Massachusetts. And what the process has to be is once it gets to your dispensary, to make sure that you adhere to the regulations and you have to watch out with your staff. I mean, you know, if there's going to be any type of pillage or anything like that, I think your focus has to be on your staff and make sure that um, you're vigilant and watching, and watching them and hiring the right people. So I think from seed to seal, that's, that's important, a part of the process. So, so the failure point really is the retail upfront salesperson? 
Those are strong words you use. I don't know about failing point, but those are the but places I would look. But that's what I'm looking for. Those are, the, those are the points I would focus on from seed to sale. I mean, because we certainly have a system that's going to track it, but we want to know, my focus would be is can anyone look at that seed to sale and figure out a way to do the end around on that. And that's what happened prior to what happened with the state police. When they had all their product, someone figured out, I'll use the term seed to sale, how can I go in there somehow and change it around and take product without them knowing it. Mm -hmm. And um, so I think, I won't say a failure, but I think that's where the focus should be on internally. Yeah, the, re the reason I asked the question that way is, as you know, this licensing commission also deals with the issuance of licenses to package stores. We're not so concerned about where that liquor is manufactured, how it's distributed, how it's transported. A lot of our concern is how it is sold to the general public. So what I'm looking for is, is um, in your security consultancy, how do you advise this new industry in terms of checking for the, for the folks who are actually going to be handling the transaction? Well, most of the product will be sealed, which is good. So you, you're going to know right away if it's compromised. It's going to be weighed, and when it gets to the facility, it's going to be weighed again, and it's going to be sealed. So I think that in itself uh, speaks volumes. So you know um, that no one's compromising that once it gets to the um, establishment. Do you also consult on the inventory control systems that they're using? Well, the metric system that they have, I mean, that's integrated. They can use some, some other type, in, as long as it's integrated with the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, that's fine. No one has asked me to do the seed to seal yet. I'm sure it's like anything else. If there's a problem, and then they'll probably want to address it then. But uh, my point is to focus on, knock on wood, there hasn't been a problem. But to focus on internally, when it comes in, what are you doing? How are you storing it? Is it sealed? Great. What to look for um, and how to secure it properly. Okay. Great. Thank you very much. I have a question for Mr. Sullivan. Do you have a remark you want to make there? Yes, uh, Mr. Okay. Chairman. I also, I, prior to my life in private practice, I ran the Alcoholic Beverages Control Commission. And I think that very much distinct between a packet store and a marijuana dispensary. A package store you're dealing with, you can have kids 18 years of age working there and above. You're paying minimum wage. There, real, there isn't a seed to sale tracking system in place. Here you have, you have to be 21 years of age. We're paying above living wage. Background checks have to be done by every employee and approved versus a liquor store. The only one that a background check is done on are the owners and the manager. So there's a lot that goes into place before someone can come to work there. So I think when you look at it, there's a lot more safety mechanisms. I would argue that... No matter what part you're in, this in, you can have theft at cultivation, you can have theft at processing, you can have theft at transportation, but the system is set up in such a way that really reduces that risk. I, I can't say there's never going to be a risk, but I think the way the system got set up by the legislature really puts in place a, a lot of checkpoints. Okay. I do have another question. During your presentation, you made a statement that uh, the residents had been notified. So... I assume that you notified the businesses. In so we notified by way of publishing in the newspaper. We notified by way of mailing out to 300 feet. And we dropped flyers off for the businesses and residents within 300 feet. So my question goes back to this. You know, we find this in the city a lot of times where um, the applicants are required to notify within 300 feet. The applicants will typically notify the property owners but there are tenants in those well, businesses. And, and that's the reason for the flyers, because you're only required to notify who owns the property. By, by putting out the flyers, that notifies the residents. In fact, when we held our community outreach meeting, um, a, I can't remember what street she was from, she showed up because she received a flyer. She lived around the corner. So that really covered that part on the residential side. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm just trying to clarify, make sure the businesses were incorporated in your community I think meeting. there may be someone here to speak f f from the association. Uh, there will be, but I wanted to make sure you're representing the applicants. So. Yes, that, everyone was notified, businesses okay. and, resi and residents. And you understand that we are not going to be deliberating tonight? No, I did not understand that. Right. We are not deliberating. We're not going to vote on the application tonight. Okay, thank you. Right. That was the statement that was right up front. So. Oh, I thought that only applied to the other two. No, it applied to items two, three, four, and 20. I apologize. I no, sorry. That's, that's okay. It. We are going to be, I'm sorry, gentlemen, everybody all set? You good? 
Well, sir? Okay. Sorry, Commissioner L. Uh, one question for your cultivation expert. Um, do you all have, you, uh, this business will not be doing its own cultivation? Not immediately. We'll be sourcing from um, other groups cultivating. Do you have agreements in place with those groups, or is that going to follow? It's going to fall into place, but not current. No, we've, we've already spoken to Rev Clinics, Sierra Naturals, and what's the third one? And Basque about supplying. We're, we're also looking to receive product from some of the micro businesses that will be opening up, some, for some of the economic empowerment applicants who are going into the other sides of the business uh, in order to help them grow their business. Thank you. Okay, so gentlemen, if you're all set, I'm going to open it up for public comment. All right. Just so everybody understands, once again, the commissioners and I, the commissioner and I, are not going to deliberate on this. We're going to hold the public record open, but because of the way that we did advertise on the city agenda, the city website, we're going to take public comment tonight. So, if anybody came in and they used the sign-up sheet for item number, I got too much paperwork in front of me here. Item number three, if you could line up. But first, I'm going to ask. Sorry. I'm going to ask um, Councillor Ben Ewing Campen if you'd like to come forward. I know we received comment, written comments from you. So if you'd like to give us a brief recap. Uh, thank you, Commissioners. For the record, I'm Ben Ewing Campen, the Ward 3 City Councillor. Um, so I've actually held two neighborhood meetings for this project. One of them is the more recent when they've actually submitted their application for the cannabis license. Before that, they had come forward. They had reached out to me as the ward counselor to, uh, because they knew that they were going to be doing this uh, in March, and they, did, they wanted to reach out to the community as early as possible. So they've, both of these meetings, I don't want to, I'm trying to remember if this is strictly true. I don't believe anyone came with negative comments whatsoever. Both of these were widely advertised. Um, there were questions, but I think overall, uh, I, I would characterize these as very positive meetings. Um, I think the applicant has done a really good job kind of responding to questions and concerns. And at this point, I have no particular outstanding concerns based on issues that I've heard. Um, I'm very impressed with a lot of the outreach that they've done and the kind of relationships they've built with folks in the neighborhood. Um, so I'm supportive of the application, and I'm uh, looking forward to hearing from the public. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Benyoun Campen. So, Laurie, we are going to enter Councillor Benyoun Campen's um, written comments into the record. I also want entered into the record um, comments that we received today, and these are from City of Somerville Health and Human Services Department. And this was from uh, Matthew Mitchell, Prevention Services Manager, Lovely Heller Botari, uh, the SCAP Program Director, and Kira Vaughn, the Substance Use Prevention Coordinator. Council Allen, that I believe that's in your packet as well. Lori, do we have any other written comments on, okay. Okay. So now let me open it up to the public. Any members of the public wish to be heard on the application? Please step forward, state your name for the record. Thank you very much. Good evening, members of the commission. My name is Jessica Eschleman. I'm the executive director of Union Square Main Streets. It was fall 2018 when the Union Leaf team approached our organization to share their plans, both the general overall gist of what kind of business they wanted to operate, as well as the redevelopment plans that they were approaching with the 71 Union Square location. Since that time, our board of directors has had an opportunity to review the plans and provide input. Uh, and I have to say, overall, our leadership is incredibly excited about this opportunity both for the enterprise itself and also for the redevelopment of this single story space in the heart of our district. Again, since that time last fall, we've been in regular content, contact rather, with the Union's LEAF team, and we're particularly excited that a longtime Somerville resident 
who has owned several small businesses in this location, truly an entrepreneur, is stepping up to this plate to take advantage of this new opportunity to bring new economic vitality and people into Union Square. We're particularly excited that this applicant is so supportive of the community activities to date and has been responsive to the concerns that I've heard raised along the way. So again, I'm here to express Union Square Main Street's wholehearted support of this application. Thank you very much, Ms. Elshelman. Anybody else wish to be heard on the application? Seeing none, it is the intention of the chair to, to continue this application until the November 18th hearing at which point the record will be kept open between now and November 18th. We do anticipate deliberating and voting on this item at that meeting. Next item, now, item number four, Northeast Select Harvest Corps, 378A, 378B, and 380 Island Avenue, requesting approval for a Group A priority new marijuana li retail license, hours of operation, None have been listed. Welcome, Councillor. State your name for the record. Uh, good evening, members of the Commission. Rich D. Girolamo on behalf of the applicant, Northeast Select Harvest Corp. Uh, joint 424 Broadway, Somerville, joined by Mr. Robert Gregory, uh, the owner of Red Bones Restaurant uh, on Chester Street in Somerville, and certainly no stranger to your commission. Um, we are here this evening again requesting, we have not had an opportunity again, as in the first case that I presented to you, um, to, to conduct a community meeting. Uh, we are attempting to schedule that meeting with Councillor Davis, and we do not yet have a date, but we are hopeful that we will have a date very soon. So we are respectfully requesting that your commission um, see fit to continue our presentation on this until your November 18th meeting, uh, after which time we would have had our community uh, meeting and we can obviously uh, give you feedback from that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Mr. Gregory, anything you want to add? Wait a minute. All set at this point? Okay. Commissioner Allen. Oh, <clears throat> Um, I will just say that while a public meeting is a requirement for the Cannabis Control Commission's application process, it is not a requirement for ours. And by virtue of the fact of the public notice, this was going to get delayed anyways. But these do need to either be scheduled in advance or become a de facto, become a actual legal requirement rather than this de facto, because I don't think it was an issue today, but. In general, I take issue with this movement and delay and reschedule of events for these unofficial event uh, requirements. Uh, ju just to address that, uh, uh, no, we recognize that there's no need to have that meeting prior to uh, your commission hearing this, although I would say that uh, certainly we would want to appreciate the input before we do that presentation. And secondly, um, we have tried and we had a, we had a meeting date set uh, for early October with Councillor Davis, but that meeting um, could not happen uh, because it, it, after it was scheduled, uh, we could not get a location, so it had to be rescheduled. So I, 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 I certainly hear you, uh, and we will certainly expeditiously schedule that meeting prior to your next, uh, next appearing before your commission. All set. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Since this is a public hearing, we are going to take public testimony and public comment. Are there any members of the public who wish to be heard on the application? Seeing none, it's the intention of the chair to continue this case until the November 18th hearing. Thank you very much, Councillor. Okay, so anybody who was here for the recreational marijuana license applications, that is the first part of tonight's hearing. Those are now continued to the November 18th hearing. Next on the agenda are the all forms alcoholic beverages, seven day restaurant licenses. These are the 2 a.m. closing reviews. 
First up, Dark Horse Public House, 499 Broadway. Good evening. If you could state your name and address for the record, please. Uh, Desmond Grace, 29 Wigglesworth Street, Somerville 02145. The business address is 499 Broadway. And the intention of the application, Desmond? Uh, which we just wanted to uh, continue our 2 a.m. on Friday and Saturday nights. Right. Sergeant Shaley. Sergeant Shaley, hold on. There have been a number of incidents um, there that haven't led to the amount of um, a violation, but I've spoken with the uh, management. We're going to try to work on a few things with them for um, crowd control when they're leaving, um, noise complaints, and there's been a uh, group gathering at 2 o'clock when the place closes, and we've had a couple of um, mutual assaults, and we've had um, gone on arrival incidents where we've gotten there, the police and the GOA gone on arrival. So, I mean, there's room for improvement, and uh, we're looking into those. Um, do you have any information on what their status was uh, during their application last year and if it has gotten better or worse? Um, Probably about the same. Um, and they did have um, police detail the year before. And this year they didn't get it on Fridays and Saturdays. And it looked like the issues that we've had have been on Fridays and Saturdays. So they recommended themselves with, they, they were going to add on a detail for Friday and Saturday night. Not a permanent, just to get things rolling. That's it. Lieutenant McLaughlin, do you have anything on this? No issues. Okay. Desmond, you heard from Sergeant Chaley. What's your, what's your take on Friday and Saturday nights at Dark Horse? You having troubles at 2 o'clock in the morning outside the bar? Um, there, there is crowds that there's always, when, when you're telling people to leave and with the capacity of the bar being what it is, there's, there's always going to be crowds of people trying to get them to disperse and not stand around outside uh, can be an issue. We do uh, plan on updating uh, staff training and, uh, and we, were, we were gonna consider putting cameras outside as well to address the issue. And do you still have a door attendant when the crowds are leaving at two? Yes, yes. But, uh, I mean, sometimes they... Doesn't sound like it's working. Sometimes they're going around collecting glasses and stuff like that rather than monitoring. We've, uh, we've been trying to get them to be more diligent about standing outside and just making sure that there's nothing bad going on outside on the sidewalk. Do you think you might need some police assistance at 2 o'clock on Friday and Saturday night at 2 a.m. in the morning? Yeah, we'd be willing to give it a try. We want so why don't you work with Sergeant Shaley? Okay. Okay. Any other questions? All right. uh, I'll make a motion to approve. You need to speak with Sergeant Shaley about some assistance. All right? Okay. Because if we get more complaints, we have to bring you back in. Understood. Understood? Yeah. Okay. Commissioner Allen. And I would say that we will... Uh, ideally next year reassess this with the goal of not a continuation of the same level, but ideally a decline. Very good. Any other questions? No? Good. Any members of the public wish to be heard on the application? Councilor Anita Gang, your ward. Anything? Good. Seeing none, make a motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Desmond, if you could work with Sergeant Shaley on it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next up, the Independent, 75 Union Square. Hi there. Um, my name is Jess Willis. I'm um, 12 Albion Street, Somerville. Good evening. I'm representing um, the Independent, and I also have two other locations on the agenda this evening, Brass Union 
at 70 Union Square, as well as um, Foundry on Elm at 255 Elm Street in Davis Square. So the two o'clock, the application that's in front of us, Ms. Willis, is for the independent. Yes. 75 Union Square. You currently have a 2 a.m. license. Yes. You wish to continue? We do. Sergeant yeah. Shaley. Okay. Lieutenant McLaughlin. Commissioner. Okay. How you doing? New owner. Great. <laughs> okay. Anything? That's, what are the items again? 18 and... Sorry. What's the other item? Good job. Was it 18? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I got it. Okay, so we're on the Independent, 75 Union Square. Any members of the public wish to be heard? Seeing none, make a motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. I'm going to take a couple of items out of order, which is at the discretion of the chair. Next up, Brass Union, 70 Union Square. Welcome. Identify yourself for the record. <laughs> Jess Willis, representing Brass Union. Current, Union Square. current 2 a.m. license. Current 2 a.m. license. Wish to renew. And we'd like to continue. Yeah, Sergeant Shaley. Lieutenant McLaughlin. Commissioner Allen. Any members of the public wish to be heard? Seeing none, make a motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. At the discretion of the chair, taking foundry on Elm, 255 Elm Street. Welcome. I know the drill now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Jess Willis representing Foundry on Elm at 255 Elm Street. Um, we currently have a 2 a.m. license and we wish to redo. Thank you very much. Sergeant Shaley. Well, the only problem we have is for a homeless person to walk in and drag someone to <laughs> How'd you handle that? Um, I think we tried to get, you know, the person out and tried to get them taken care of. And, you know, sometimes it's beyond our abilities. So we call in for help. Very good. Thank you very much. Lieutenant McLaughlin. Okay. Any members of the public wish to be heard on the application? Seeing none, make a motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. At the chair's discretion, I am moving to take item number 18 out of water. This is this is a continuance from uh, the last time that you were in front of us uh, for the change of ownership for the restaurant group. It is, yes. And this is something that was given back to us by the CCC to ensure that the paperwork was correct. The ABCC ABC, um, sent I'm sorry. it back. Yeah, the, the city's records and the ABC, there was a conflict between the city's records and the ABCC's records. Correct. So we wanted so if, to correct that. If you that. would let me, yep, I'm going to read the item. It's a change of manager application, Union Square Group, Inc., DBA Brass Union, 70 Union Square, requesting approval for a change of manager from Kenneth Kelly to Jessica Willis. So this was approved, your transfer of stock, your new stockholder, pledge of license, pledge of investors, pledge of stock, and change of officers, directors, LLC manager. That's what was approved. This is a purely administrative thing, but you're required to come back in front of the licensing commission. Yes. Thank you very much. All set? Yes. Any members of the public wish to be heard on the application? Seeing none, make a motion to approve. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Jess. Thank you, everybody. Back to the regular order of business. We have Casey's, 171 Broadway. Going once, going twice. Casey's, 171 Broadway. Sure. Ah. I know, so it was Orleans, Trina Starlight, which is me, Burren, Casey's, and one more. Sorry, I, I didn't mean to interrupt. But. No, I'm glad you did, but let me just remind folks when you get these notices of the agendas right up front, it tells you the location. Yeah, I have it. 
Can you, can you, I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, can you just bring that up to the secretary so she'd take a look at it? The agenda, uh, let me just say this, the agenda did specifically say that it was being held in their council chamber. My apologies. Um, can we just get a hold of the 2 a.m. license holders? Yep. All right. So some of them might not be here tonight. Uh, so we're going to continue Casey's till November. PJ Ryan's, 239. 239, 241 Holland Street. Welcome, state your name for the record. Good evening, uh, Connor Brennan for representing PJ Ryan's, 239, 241 Holland Street, summer. 2 a.m. current license holder. Current license holder requesting renewal. Thank you. Lieutenant. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? No, sir. On PJ Ryan's, 2 a.m. closing. Any members of the public wish to be heard? Seeing none, make a motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Connor. Thank you very much. Uh, Old Magoon Saloon, 518 Medford Street. Welcome. State your name for the record. My name is Christina Benson-Many Christina, current 2 a.m. license holder. That is correct, sir. Looking to renew? Yes, please. Sergeant Shaley. Any member? All set? Any members of the public wish to be heard? Seeing none, make a motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. 247 Elm Street, the Burren. 247 Elm Street, the Burren. Continue this to November. Fasica, 145 to 147 Broadway. Welcome, state your name for the record. My name is Befkadu Defar. I'm here for Fasika Restaurant at 145 Broadway. I'm currently the 2 a.m. license holder. I want to continue. Sergeant Shaley. Um, over the last year, there have been two fights. Yeah, two fights in the last year. Um, And we had one incident that um, started in the bar where a patron got um, sliced with a bottle. So that is still pending a court case, so we didn't want to um, give too much information on this case. But, but there have been a couple of incidents. No issues. Nothing. So you heard Sergeant Shaley. Can you tell me what's happening down there? Um, the one incident is that uh, the uh, stabbing thing is that the guy, there was no fight or anything. The just, guy just come and uh, try to attack the guy and run away. Um, so one of, one of the people involved came from the outside. They were not a patron he, of he yours. He was there and he just uh, get up and try to attack the guy, and then no issue or anything, all of a sudden he just ran out. We follow him and call the police, and all the patrons follow the guy, and uh, they caught him before the police come, and the police uh, then uh, arrest him, and that thing is in the court. Uh, one of the, the other issues is that uh, one of the patrons uh, start like, harassing the girls in the bar, so, the guys uh, took him outside. He. Yeah, I'm sorry. Which guys? The, the my son and his friend just hold him and took Employees him. Employees of your restaurant took yes, him outside. Outside. He's not happy about that. Mm -hmm. So he called the police and said he said he's just attacked, but he didn't file any kind of uh, charges or anything. But he called the police because he wasn't beaten or anything happened. What, t what time of night was this? Uh, it's around one o'clock. So we just uh, 
take him because he just ha, ha, have too much uh, to drink and then we, we take him out. He's not happy about we doing that. And then we go outside. He just called the police that I just pushed out and uh, but he wasn't he uh, beaten or anything happened. There's, there wasn't a fight. Sergeant Shelley, how many incidents again? Two? Total of three. What time were the incidents? A little past two o'clock in the morning. On the, on the ninth. One forty three AM. And the day of the week? Um, they were Saturday into Sunday. Do you understand what Sergeant Shelley's saying? You might have a little problem with the two o'clock license if you can't control the patrons. I, I will uh, try my best. I always, since uh, last year, every time when the crowd uh, was leaving, uh, dispersing, I, I personally out there and just this person, I don't, I used to have that uh, problem. Um, that was, wasn't any complaint from the neighbors or from the police about uh, dispersing the cloud. But recently, um, since the, the casino and a couple of uh, clubs started uh, open in Everett, and there are a crowd who come from there, which some of them I just, uh, after a while, I just don't let them in. So some of their friends come early and uh, when I just shut them out, the other one, they are start waiting outside, around there, hanging, until the other people come. Mm. And those people, we just start looking who is coming with whom and get rid of those people uh, for the long time, not even to come to the bar. So uh, after we did that almost for the last uh, uh, three months, almost I can say like two, three months, we just uh, reduced uh, the people who are just uh, most likely coming from those areas. So that is one of the, uh, the issues about like, people coming from the other areas after, after hours. And we uh, try to avoid those people in general. So I'm trying to work. If, uh, if any time I have an issue, I will be more than ha happy uh, to work with him and uh, any issues come to me. And, drop off in problems for the last four months so the issues were were um, June and July and they've been good since then uh, Sergeant is it normally expected is a normal behavior to have staff physically evict patrons from the premises we try not to, but if they're combative and assaultive, they can take them out to prevent that. Okay. You want to keep your 2A element license? Can you do me a favor? Work closely with Sergeant Shaley. If you have trouble groups that are arriving at your establishment and causing issues, feel free to call the police. At the same time, I just uh, I will just want to personally meet him to with him and uh, concern his concerns and if I have issues, especially with those groups. Sometimes those are not customers of mine, and it's very hard to deal with them. If they are in the other block, you can't even tell them what to do because they are not coming there. You, and uh, that's one of the issues. But when everybody leaves, they are the one who maybe have a conflict with the, with the customers. In that way, I have to okay. know what kind of action I have to take. Right. If, you, if you could work with Sergeant Shaley, um, it, it, you know, it may come to the fact that you recognize when certain people are going to arrive at your establishment, you may need to have police presence there. All right, so work with Sergeant Shaley. Are you okay with that? Okay. Okay. Any members of the public wish to be heard on the application? 
Seeing none, make a motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next up, Orleans Restaurant, 5965 Holland Street. We'll continue that to November. Thank you. Trina's Lounge, eight, number three, Beacon Street. Welcome. State your name for the record. Joshua Childs, Trina Starlight Lounge. Joshua, 2 a.m. license. Yes. You'd like to continue? Yes, please. Sergeant Shaley. No issues? You good? Great. Any members of the public wish to be heard on the application? Seeing none, make a motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Thanks very much. Thank you. Next up, El Patro, 61 Union Square. Welcome. State your name for the record. Uh, Joseph Crow from El Potro Mexican Grill, 61 Union Square. We presently have a 2 a.m. license and we wish to continue it. Thank you very much. Any members of the public wish to be heard? Seeing none, make a motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Joseph. Thank you. Next up, Earl's Kitchen and Bar. We're going to continue that item to either the end of this hearing or November. We did have an item that was requested to be taken out of order. Well, let me just say this, that um, I can't make heads or tails out of the email that came in. Counselor Bigorino, <laughs> you requested to take something out of order. You, I'm sorry. I am sorry. Where's my agenda? Now I lost my agenda. What number is Keltar? Where is that? Sorry, folks. I'd like to take uh, item number 25 out of water, Keltar Corporation. This is an existing alcohol license. It is a private license. All forms, seven-day restaurant. Requesting a change of officers, directors, and registered agent. Keltar Corp DBA Sligo Pub, 237A Elm Street, requesting approval for a change of officers, directors from Thomas W. Mannion as Secretary and Treasurer to Kelly Ann Mellon, Mellon as Treasurer and Director, Tara Champagne as Direct Secretary and Director, and Thomas Mannion as Registered Agent. Welcome and state your name for the record. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and uh, Commissioner. Uh, th first of all, thank you very much uh, for taking this out of order. My client deeply appreciates that. Uh, Ann Vigorito, 424 Broadway, Somerville, Massachusetts, uh, re representing the applicant here. Uh, as you've stated, Caltar Corporation, uh, they do business as Sligo Pub at 237A Elm Street in Davis Square. Uh, they've been a part of the Davis Square scheme for over 30 years, first of all. And Thomas Mannion, who is right next to me, is the president as well as the uh, manager on the liquor license. And next to him is his daughter Kelly Moline and his daughter Tara Champagne. Uh, this is truly one of the 
few that I know of family owned and operated businesses here in Somerville. Uh, but they work as a team. And Tom, who's 80 years young, is not giving up any reins. He's still staying on as the liquor manager. The daughters have worked in assistant managerial capacities. They're actually taking on more duties, and hence that's why we are making Kelly uh, the treasurer, and she'll be on the board of directors, and then Tara will be the secretary as well as being on the board of directors. So that's what we're here for this evening. Uh, they, uh, they, they worked with their dad for many years, and they're taking on more duties. Uh, at Sligo Pub, and they want to continue to be there, hopefully for another 30. So we would respectfully request approval of the change in the officer and directors. Okay. Tom, you're not going anywhere, right? No. All right. Nope. Nope. He's staying. I don't have time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All our paperwork in order. Mm -hmm. We're all good. Any questions, Commissioner Allen? Lieutenant McLaughlin, nothing. And, All they good? Don't have, and they don't have a 2 a.m. license. I know. You would, have, you would have been on that first list, and then I could have taken you out of order. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're all set. Any members of the public wish to be heard on the application? Mr. Mannion, I want, I want you to tell us what a joy it has been to be operating the Sligo Pub in Somerville. After over 30 years, you get used to it, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we've had it, it, it was terrific down there. You know, just so long as you police the people, have one with them now and then. Changing crowd, though, down there, huh? Yeah, oh, boy. Yeah. But are they're they, good. Are they more polite than the old days, or are they? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That speaks I, volume for my age group, huh? I remember the time when somebody would walk away from the bar with a glass and bump it, and there'd be a fight. Mm. Now they apologize and buy him a drink. I love it. Who says New Somerville does, doesn't know how to behave? Right, yeah. No, very gentlemanly like. The, the ladies are just the same. <laughs> That's a testament. I mean, they don't say that about my house on Saturday night, so very good. Any members of the public wish to be heard? No. Make a motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Mannion. See you soon. Pop in. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Back to the regular order of business. And Commissioner Allen, would you like to make a motion to um, take some, ish some of these out of order? Yes. I believe the right formatting for this would be I move that we take move items seven, eight, and nine to the end of the agenda. Make that motion. Second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Seven, eight, and nine. We will. Okay. I'm going to take back to the regular item. Item number six. This was continued from the September 16th meeting. It's a communication sent from the City Council by City Clerk John Long pertaining to resolution number 208906, requesting the Licensing Commission investigate over-serving of alcohol to inebriated customers from liquor stores along East Broadway and propose solutions to address the over-serving and littering. This matter was referred to Sergeant Shaley. Sergeant Shaley will make a report at this matter on October 21st. 2019 meeting, turning it over to Sergeant Shaley. Communication sent from City Clerk John Long pertaining to the resolution to the Somerville City Council. The following is a list of possible resolutions taken by myself and other members of the Somerville Police Department. 
We're going to enforce the existing laws and regulations about the sales and service, speak to the owners of the establishment, as well as staff members. Routinely monitor and report the prevalence, frequency of intoxicated patrons of liquor establishments, including restaurants serving alcohol, as well as the retail liquor stores. We're going to increase the compliance checks, incorporate more offices to watch and enforce all alcohol-related issues. We're going to put more surveillance patrols in the areas, continue to work and increase some of who cares about prevention, ensure restaurants and liquor stores routinely clean around their businesses. And um, we've had some of that. We have we're going to have them come out there and monitor cigarettes and trash that their um, customers leave behind. I ensure restaurants and liquor stores are routinely clean. Um, contact the health department and have residents notify 311 for health related issues with trash problems. Um, we have seen an um, increase in homeless population in East Somerville, and um, some of the littering we're having customers actually feed some of the homeless and they're leaving the trash all around the area. So um, we're going to make the um, businesses and restaurants responsible for the trash that's left over. Um, we've had a couple of complaints from um, some of the restaurants about some of the homeless that were hanging out and drinking in front of their establishments. Uh, we've we've um, you know had some of them removed, um, and they were seen to be hanging around near Casey's area. Some of the homeless were living behind. I think with some of the construction projects are going on. So these, this is a plan that's in place, and um, we're um, it's already been started by patrol units. Good. Good. May I ask a couple of questions first? When you file a report like this at the request of the city council, do you also disseminate this to uh, folks who deal with our homeless population in the city, like the Somerville Homeless Coalition and some of the not-for-profit agencies? No. Okay. Okay. You know, our health department, I know there are probably some folks who deal with the homeless population. Does that go to them, saying, we have an issue here, it's a public safety, public health, do you think it could assist us with something? I do work with, uh, with Matt Mitchell, I work in the with some of the kids about prevention, and they relay some of this information, but I think we'll do a better communication with that, so we can you know, get more services out there. Okay, all right. So, Shelley, thank you for the report. We're going to forward this on to Councilor McLaughlin, who made the original request through the city clerk's office. So I'm going to recommend that we keep tabs on what's happening on East Broadway uh, for the city councilor's um, request that there are, it appears as though there is an increase happening down there. And the city councilor is requesting the license commission to keep tabs on it. Okay. Council, I mean, uh, Commissioner. All set? Okay, thank you, Sergeant Shaley. Uh, we're going to move on to item number seven. We continued that, correct? Yes. Item number eight, we continued that to the end of the meeting. Item nine. This is an item that was continued from September 16th. Chairman Lynch proposed late fees for special alcohol applications and late license renewals. This matter was continued to the October or November meeting to be instituted on January 1st, 2020. City Clerk is available. City Clerk has prepared a report for the Licensing Commission. Welcome City Clerk John Long. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the opportunity to be here. My name is John Long. I'm the city clerk in the city of Somerville. 
And what I've just distributed to you is in response to uh, a request that was made last month <clears throat> that, that the staff uh, in the city clerk's office prepare a recommendation for the institution of late fees. Uh, and I want to thank you for the opportunity for us to put this together because, um, as I say in the explanatory memo that begins my uh, proposal, late submissions are in fact a problem for staff to, to address. We process items through CitizenServe, the software application, and in the normal course of events, things flow fairly well through CitizenServe, but when items come in late, uh, we're not able to let things flow in the normal course of events because they're late. There's no time to do that, so we've got to kind of manually walk them through from department to department and make sure that everyone is jumping uh, to take quick action on them. And in fact, sometimes, as you're aware, we're submitting supplemental applications, and, uh, supplemental agendas in order to accommodate these late items that have, that have popped in. So what we're hoping to do, or what I'm proposing here, is that we institute a late fee for all applications, including new applications, uh, renewal, renewing applications, renewal of licenses, and uh, amendments that are submitted late that come in after the deadline for presentation to a license and commission meeting. Anything that comes in late, we propose a late fee of 10% of the total cost of the license, the annual license, or the special, the, the, the one-time only cost of the license, with a floor of $50. So that's the proposal. Uh, there's a bit of text on the memorandum side, and if you flip it around to the back side of the document, you will see a table which shows the proposed late fees for each different type of license we have. We show the current fees that are in place now in the first three columns, and in the last column are the proposed fees that what 10% or with a $50 floor would come to. I did not clearly mark, but at the bottom third of the uh, list of fees, you will see entertainment fees, uh, Fees related to opening early on a Sunday or staying late on a weekend, fees for private patio. Those fees are not subject to the $50 floor because they're only um, add-on items for a license that has already been issued, you know, for a restaurant or an inn or whatever it may be. So what I want to indicate here is that these entertainment or opening early on a Sunday, those, those fees don't get a $50 floor because really we're just at, they're being added on to the cost of the license and the overall license will be billed at 10% if the application is late. Okay. And I finally want to point out that the due dates for all um, license and commission meetings are posted on the website. And we do on a, I'm sorry, all set? Yes. John. Thank you. We do on a regular basis inform the license holders that their licenses are coming up for renewal. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. So we'll be do, sending... do we have any complaints by license holders that they're not receiving timely notice? <laughs> it's kind of a strange hearing for me to ask whether or not people are seeing where notices are being posted, but you get my gist. I mean, you handle how many licenses on a monthly, yearly basis? Hundreds. Several hundred thousands. for the licensing commission, and and several hundred as well for the for the uh, city council. Right. And are you receiving complaints that then people are not getting the notice on time? No, no, we're not getting okay. notice. Occasionally, people say they didn't get the notice. Um, and, and we're reliant on, on the U.S. Mail Service, which is, does an admirable job, but is not bulletproof. Um, but we also remind people it is incumbent on the licensee to maintain uh, licensure of their... Uh, it's kind of the, the RMV method. Yeah, that's right. You better know when your license expires. That's right. Okay. Commissioner Allen, any questions? 
No, I'm just saying that I think that's a 10% with the $50 floor is a perfectly reasonable threshold, enough to make people do it on time the next time, because the goal here is for it not to be a revenue generator, but to make life easier for the staff. We're hoping we never have to charge that fee. <laughs> Questions? I do have a comment, uh, Commissioner. Uh, we're about to begin our, our annual uh, liquor license inspections, uh, inspection services in the fire department. Over the past three years, I've had complaints from uh, several owners about not receiving their renewals um, and trying to pay us during the inspections, but not knowing the, the cost of the inspection or the renewal fees. Um, currently, last month's meeting, we talked about this briefly, and we have approximately 11 establishments that open after 5 o'clock that are past our inspection times. I am currently taking uh, email uh, communications with them to set up times during the day to inspect them, and also notifying uh, a number of these um, establishments that the renewal process is beginning, the inspection is beginning, and as we do our inspections, I will be notifying the uh, owners that the renewals are, are due. They may not have them in the mail, but it's up to them to get them in to avoid the fees that we talked about last month. So there is something in place, at least for the alcohol-related inspections that we're doing. Okay. Thank you, Lieutenant McLaughlin. Do you need assistance from the city clerk's office for any of that? It would be helpful just to give you a, a hard copy of what the fees are? Yeah, that would be nice. Okay. Laurie, can you just help? Yeah. Because those are published on the city's website. Yeah. Am I correct in that? Correct. I made a statement without even looking at you, John. <laughs> Okay, I am, uh, I am satisfied with it, and one of the reasons I asked for this to be done uh, was to take the burden off of the city clerk's office when they do everything they can to notify license holders that their renewals are coming up, and it has become um, somewhat of a problem for the city clerk's office to be taking late applications and to interrupt the workflow, and then to have to make other things wait. So. Hopefully this will act as a deterrent and license holders will pay attention to their expiration dates. Are there any members of the public who wish to be heard on this item? Come forward and state your name and address for the record. Welcome. Hi, my name is Nick. I'm the events coordinator with Brooklyn Boulder Somerville at 12A Tyler Street. Uh, I just wanted to make a comment that I often find citizen serve as a portal to be very difficult to manage, often crashes midway through submitting license applications, um, and is not very intuitive to navigate if you're not guided through it by another member who has used the platform before. Um, I think looking at and reviewing the efficacy and user usability of citizen serve as a portal may be helpful in terms of improving the turnaround on applications. Um, and we may, it's possible that that may, in addition to other measures, uh, assist in getting more applications in on time. I'll also say that I have to consistently go back to the Licensing Commission's website and re-download the form, the Excel document that indicates when the meetings are being held to make sure that there's not a change in date to meeting times or deadlines as that has happened in the past. If there were some place where this information was publicly updated regularly so that I didn't have to continue to download documents to my desktop, little things like that to make it a little bit more user friendly to the, uh, app to the applicant, I think that could also contribute to the uh, increase in applications being submitted on time. Speaking from my perspective, I do want to thank uh, John Long for all the work that you do processing hundreds and thousands of applications throughout the year, and you've helped us at Brooklyn Boulders get many through uh, in a timely manner, and I appreciate that quite a bit. So that's all I want to say. Can, can, let me stay up here for Zach for a minute. So we see you almost on a monthly basis. Yeah. So you use CitizenServe on a monthly basis. Yeah. And what I'm getting from your comment tonight is that the system is not reliable, which often causes an abandonment rate for the person using it and then they come back at a later point, and that may be causing late applications? I don't know necessarily that that specific issue is causing the majority of the late applications that we see. I think that it is indicative, though, that citizen serve as a portal is challenging to manage, at least for me, and I don't know if that's manifesting in other ways for other applicants. 
um, who may not be here to speak to that today. So I guess I just wanted to speak up about citizen service as a portal generally, and perhaps it might not be the most user intuitive way to submit these applications. But do you have any issues with the late fees? Do I have any issues with the late fees? Uh, aside from my personal feelings about late fees and their efficacy in terms of turning around a desired effect, um, no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> On a professional level, no. Great. All right. Any other questions? No? Thank you, Zach. Any other members of the public wish to be heard? Seeing none, make a motion to adopt the fees as presented by City Clerk John Long. Second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. John, thank you very much. And we are on to item number 10. Yes. Item number 10, the Catered Affair, Inc. Notifying the commission of an event to be held at Partners Healthcare at 399 Revolution Drive on Thursday, October 3rd. The uh, notice was received on 930. This is an administrative matter, is that correct, Ms. Batside? That's correct. Okay, duly noted, placed on file, please. Item number 11, the commission has requested a status request to the licenses for legendary burger concepts LLC DBA Burger Dive located at 702 Grand Union Boulevard. It has come to the Commission's attention that the business is closed. No notice has been forthcoming pertaining to this closure. Permission is required for the closure. The licensee informed the Commission he cannot appear at this time due to a medical condition. He has notified the Commission in writing of the closure of this business and is returning the alcohol license in an email received on 8 13 19. Uh, thank you very much. If I could just instruct the secretary clerk, um, the applicant is supposed to be returned the original alcohol license. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. And have they? Not yet. And he said he sent it at the mail and I have not received it. Okay. Date of sending? But we still have not received it? Nope. All right. Let's continue the item to November. And if we get it in, we'll close it out by then. Item number 11 is continued to November. Item number 12, the commission has requested a status request of the licenses for Somerville Brewing Company, DBA American Fresh Brew House, located at 490 Foley Street. It's come to the attention of the Commission that a change has been made in the business arrangement of the licensee. Welcome, and state your name for the, ad, for the record. Thank you. Good evening. Jeff Leiter and Caitlin Jewell from Somerville Brewing Company providing the required notification that the company has filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy on September 27th. Bankruptcy protection. Protection, yes. And that uh, we are uh, continuing operations as normal, and uh, that there is no, no change whatsoever in, in anything related to our licenses. So at the present time, there are no changes in management, nope. no changes in manager of record, no changes of the license holder, okay? No How changes. about in the pledging of the stock? No changes at this time. No changes at this time, okay. No changes of hours. Okay. And all staff remain on payroll and have been paid. Okay. And uh, Tim Florentino was changed publicly per record a couple years ago. It was just sent in as a paperwork. I can update it if I did it wrong. This is Which, this. It's Tim problems. Florentino, but we did it by yes. citizens. I was told there were two properties that were both going under the bankruptcy protection. Right, but I'm questioning this is off of citizen serve listing Tim Florentino. 
It is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as the manager of your establishment. Is that correct? Not correct. Okay. Which, which license is that? This is... Um, no, no, no. This is for 490 Foley Street. Mm -hmm. 490 Foley Street, Somerville Brewing Company, DBA, American Fresh Brew House. Okay, so they're saying that's a long manager? Correct. All right, I will pull the original ABCC application, and if, if that's the original manager, then you need to do an amendment. Okay, okay. Okay, that looks like the only that looks like the only thing that needs to be updated on the application is that change of manager. We're still listing Florentino for some reason on our system, right? Um, so because the notification came into the commission, we had to ask you to come forth, verify your information. You, um, it's always beneficial when you're going through a reorganization to make sure that the local licensing commission and the ABCC have the exact same information. So Lori's going to work with you to get that information changed about the manager. Okay? Got it? No, we're going to vote on that. Okay. We're going to vote. You, you need to take action on it, though, to have them update okay. citizen serve. Okay? Any questions? No. Okay. Any members of the public wish to be heard on the application? Seeing none, make a motion to approve with the condition that citizen service update to reflect the correct manager's name. Um, what are we approving? This is. Uh, I think it's not taking any action. Uh, it's, a it's a status request. So you're right. You're absolutely right. We don't have to take a vote on this thing. We, you updated the status of your application. Thank you very much. Work with Lori. We'll get it up up to date. Thank you very much for appearing. Thank you for thank you. Thank, you. thank you, Commissioner. Nice. Item number 13, the Commissioner has requested a status request of the licenses for Broadway Barbecue LLC DBA East End Grill located at 118 Broadway. The Commission has not received any information pertaining to your intent for the licenses held for this closed business. Welcome. If you could state your name for the record. Yeah. Mike Bandar and Juana Bandar. Greeting. Yeah, so uh, that, that uh, business was closed and we're currently developing that property and the hope is to continue to have an operation there uh, when the development is done. Okay, Michael, this is a private license, correct? Correct. Okay. And with the redevelopment, is the license going with it or are you intending to sell the license separately from the redevelopment? I would prefer to sell the license. Okay. Do we still have, um, has the license been updated with zero hours no. that they are closed? Okay. All right, Michael, I'm going to ask you to work with Lori just to make sure that our records reflect the proper status of the business. Okay. So the business has been closed for a while. Yep. You have zero hours of operation. You have a private license. Let's make sure all of that is in order. We would never notify into the city clerk's office of the closure. Okay, yeah. Okay. All right. Any questions about this item? No. Any members of the public? Everything's good. Thank you so much for attending. It's end of year. We're trying to clean up Got everything. Yeah, All right. I'll call Larry. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I do have a request to take an item out of order. Item number 21. Sorry, item number 21, Jason McCool, 10 Homer Square, requesting approval of a special alcohol license for the purpose of dispensing or selling alcoholic beverages for late night gathering for American Musicological Society Conference to be held indoors at Warehouse 11, 11 Sanborn Court on Thursday, October 31st, 2019 from 9 p.m. to 1 a.m. Welcome. State Hi. your name for the record, Jason. Jason McCool. Commissioner, 
Take it away. I'm getting out of breath up here. <laughs> it's been a long meeting. Um, could you tell us a little bit about the event? Yeah, sure. So, uh, so the American Musicological Society. So. Uh, I'm a musicologist, which is a fancy term for a music historian. Um, I'm an adjunct professor of music at Boston College. Um, but I also work in, uh, in the capacity of the head of arts and culture at Aeronaut. So I'm very well versed with event management and that, that sort of stuff. Uh, so the AMS, American Musicological Society, has an annual conference. And they usually pick cities all around. Last year's was in Vancouver. This year's is in Boston. Um, I was contacted as sort of a friend of a friend situation um, and said we need a venue to host our late night, um, it's like the fun presentations where they mock all the rest of the people in the field and they're like five minute like video like you know PowerPoint kinds of things. Um, so I said oh that's cool I have a, it, it's going to be really hard to get a venue because it's Halloween. Um, this conference happens that weekend, and Thursday night is the only night it can happen. Um, so I said, well, there's a, there's a warehouse right where I live. Um, I know the owner. She'll you know, give it to me on the cheap. And um, I have a, a sort of a side gig making cocktails. So I have you know, like living room parties where I invite people over, and we have the sort of historical cocktail you know, type of stuff. So I thought it would be interesting to sort of combine that with this... Uh, gathering of a bunch of academics from around the country, uh, most of whom who have never been to Somerville, they probably know Boston, but you know, I'm sort of like cross the river and see where the cool people hang out. So, neat, um, exciting. Um, getting down to a couple of the nitty gritty details, you talked about you're doing event management, aeronaut, so I think you know a couple of the things I will want to ask. Can you tell me them before I ask them? Sure. Uh, in terms of, uh, I'm, I'm sort of here as an exploratory mission for myself because I want to find out what actually goes into what you folks would be looking for. Yeah. Um, in terms of, I mean, I'm a TIP certified uh, bartender, so I, I do have that. Um, this would not be a heavy drinking crowd. This is a bunch of academics from around the country. Uh, so. Where will you be sourcing your liquor from? Uh, that's a really good question. I mean, I'm happy to buy it, you know, myself. That's what I would envision doing. Um, I understand that if there is a one-day license, that there is some, some sort of wholesale thing that I could get, but I'm not even terribly concerned uh, about that. The thing there is you do need to go through a distributor who will deliver the liquor or the alcohol to the venue where it will then be consumed. Um, we don't have to worry about this at Aeronaut, obviously. So. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, so uh, Lori can provide you a list of those, mm -hmm. um, and I, you would want to check with her, but I don't know, if you did get beer, liquor from Aeronaut or something, or beer from Aeronaut, it would be a different operation, but that also falls under that purview. It, more importantly, just you are not buying it from a liquor store. Okay. Um, excellent. Uh, how many people would you estimate anticipate at this event? So on the lower end, 40. I think probably around 50 or 60. Um, could be as high as 100, but I don't think it would be that many. That's what I've, that's what I've been told, at least. And Lieutenant, I... Warehouse 11 is rated for what, like 110 or something? I'm sorry. Uh, uh, how many is Warehouse 11 rated for, roughly, ballpark? One, 130 something, I believe, but it is sprinkled. Perfect. Um, excellent. I think that ends my questions. Do you have anything? Uh, I'm good. Tip certified, pours, everything's all set. Yep. Great. You're good? <laughs> Yeah. Okay. License is in your name. You do understand that when it gets issued. Yeah. Right. Any issues? Okay. Great. Um, make a motion that we approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you, folks. And and no, I talked to Lori about the uh, getting the. Lori so can provide you a list of distributors. You can okay. also Google it if you want. It's not hard to find. Okay. And then, do I give them the license number or something? How does that? They so don't. just. They don't need it. You can work with Laurie. I'll email you, Laurie. Yes. Thanks so much. Appreciate Thanks, Jason. I'd like to make a motion to take, a, I'm going to request that we take item number 20 out of order. Ball Square Cafe and Breakfast, Inc. DBA Ball Square Cafe and Breakfast, 708 Broadway, requesting an alteration of premises from 36 seats to 54 seats. You are expanding into Victor's Deli at 710 Broadway. Welcome. State your name for the record. Thank you, board members. Mike Mosher, Ball Square Cafe, 708 Broadway, Somerville. Michael, you're the current owner of Ball Square Cafe and Breakfast. 
Yes, for the last 12 years, yes. And it is the side-by-side -side, um, to Victor's Deli? Yes. And you're going through that wall? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, just if you could update the commission a little bit about how you're going to do that, what your plan looks like, when you have to go in front. Do you have to go in front of ZBA? Um, I don't think so. You have to go um, in front of the building folks, though, inspectors and pull yeah, your building permits. I did hire a, um, a structural engineer and a, um, um, architect. Architect, thank you. You're welcome. Um, and uh, the plans are looking great. Um, I guess it was submitted partially Friday and today for the uh, construction part. And uh, it's, I guess it's not a big project, just um, cutting a small hole in the wall, doing like um, just cosmetic work. And um, we're ready to, to move forward. Um, one of the things that we always do in terms of any restaurants that are expanding is make sure, excuse me, make sure you check with the planning department, the city of Somerville. Just inform them what you're going to be doing. Make sure you're pulling the right permits. Make sure you don't have to go in front of other, any other body. So you do have to come in front of us because we're the ones that issue you the restaurant license. Part of the restaurant license is the number of seats, number of tables, number of seats. Has to go through the fire department, has to go through the uh, inspectional services department. So we don't govern that. We just govern taking a look at your restaurant license. So there are all kinds of other entities in the city that you're going to have to touch base with. The first one I always advise restaurant tours to go to is the planning department. Work with economic development, tell them that you're going to be expanding the restaurant, what do I have to do? So you need an architect, you need a building guy, but just so there's no surprises further down the line. I appreciate clarifying. Um, from what I understand, I thought when you go to ISD, I believe there's a bunch of department heads that have to sign off on the uh, on the on the um, the building on the plans on the permit. So you're, I think you're pulling the permit with the yes. plans, correct? So I, does it doesn't matter. Do I still have to follow up with the planning board? Yeah, Mike. It's just my advice. Always touch base with planning. Tell them what you're going to do. Say, do I have to come in front of you guys? Awesome. Makes sense. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, because I don't know the zoning for that area. Right. Okay. Just to be clear, we're just amending a license because Victor's has a license for the last 37 years. Right. Um, Dad over here, Dad and Mama are on. Stepping down, they're retiring. Right. You are going to be changing the name of Victor's, though? Yes. All right. So remember all of the changes, any changes you do, hours, name change, stock ownership, all that stuff has to come back through us. Okay, no problem. Uh, what I did want to ask that maybe ask the board is uh, there's not like such a thing of a template to find out what the steps are because if you go on the portal, there's really no, no clarification. It's like, where do I go? Who do I ask? Yeah. I've asked some friends along the way, but people are like, um, just, you know, this, this is all I really know. Yeah. I think it'd be really helpful, like, on that portal, if you guys can kind of explain to say, okay, this is what to do in this kind of scenario. Let me give you, since you're asking me, let me give you a name. I want you to call Tom Galagani, who is economic development, and Tom's going to get, put you in touch with one of his, his planners. Okay, in economic you. development, because you're an existing business, you're going to be expanding. He can give you kind of the guideline. Here are the departments you need to talk to. Here's your, here's your first stop, here's your second stop, here's your third stop. Your first stop, obviously, is getting a permit right. for the common victualler to say it's okay to expand into that site. Right. Right? So Thank once you. we send our paperwork around, they're going to start seeing, people are going to say you need this permit, you need this permit. But I always advise smaller businesses, because you don't have an attorney who's going to do all this stuff for you, use the city resources. Go to planning, ask them what you need to do. Awesome. Thanks so much. All right. Any other questions, Commissioner? Sergeant Chaley? No? Okay. Help me. We need the lease and the deed. Awesome. I was... Um, I brought it to their attention, and uh, they said that we don't need a lease because my dad and mom, they were the landlords. It's not a problem. We can get one if we need, need be, but we, um, after I brought it to their attention, they said it was family, so it wasn't a big deal. It's the lease or deed for okay. that property. The deed's not a problem. I, I'm sure my dad has it. Um, I, we obviously don't have it on us. Um, who should I bring it to and when? Directly to Lori Batzek, city clerk's office. Awesome. Okay. Anything else? Anything else that might 
Awesome. Thanks. Any Thanks members of the public wish to be heard on the application? Seeing none, make a motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Okay, Commissioner, you want to help me here? Absolutely. What number are we at? 14? Uh, yes. Item number 14, the Commission has requested a status request of the licenses. I'm, I'm, excuse me, I'm just going to say the name of the organization for SABRE, located at 212 Holland Street. Commission requires an update pertaining to your intent for the licenses held for this closed business. Permission is required for the closure. If you could just state your name, and I apologize for not even attempting it. Good evening. My name is Azem Darvishevich. I'm one of the license holders. In 2001, my partner, who is another uh, license holder, purchased Sabu Restaurant at 212 Holland Street from Sydney Femina family. Uh, we sold majority shares to the latest uh, business owner who closed the business on June 5th without notifying us about that issue. We actually found out from the owner of the building that she didn't receive the rent. So the business is now closed and we are looking to sell the license. We didn't have time to, I mean, when we purchased the business, you are aware that the uh, cost of the license was much, much higher than it is now. So we got very hard financial loss. So we are just looking to, I, I think you, the business is closed, that we are looking to sell the license and have okay. some time to, to do that. Okay. Azim, this is a private license, correct? Yes, it is. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Commissioner Allen. Uh, when that transfer, uh, when did that transfer happen to this third party? It was never happened because we held it in our name until we are paid in full. Yeah, okay. so it's, it, it was not transfer, so we were hoping to transfer once. So we didn't, he still owned us the money, which is a different issue from this one. So they were running the restaurant, but they had not yet received, they were not yet owners? It was like a purchasing, they purchased majority of the business and then we will sell them 100%, uh, you know, over the time. But then they run into financial difficulties without notifying us. We found out from the owner of the building that they didn't receive the rent and the owner of the building asked us to do this so they can... Uh, seek some other options. Do we have uh, them on record as receiving that initial ownership share? Uh, we can provide that, but I have to check with my the other license holder. Okay. Uh, just one of the things, anytime there's not just, you know, the complete transfer of a license, but an organization that holds a license, if any fraction of those shares change hands, you have to go through notifying the city and notifying the ABCC. So if these people own, can right now own a fraction of this license, we do not have a record of that. Um, and that would be something that would need to be straightened out as part of your transferring the license, making sure that the provenance of that license right now is clear. Uh, I have to check with uh, my other license holder, so I think we were holding the license without, like we were transferring the other assets of the business, but not the ownership and the, of the license. Because that was the highest value of any restaurant before, which is not the case anymore, so. Okay. So Azim, the, the collateral has lost value. Unfortunately. Yes. Yeah. Okay, Azim, what we'd like you to do, um, because the restaurant still holds a liquor license, um, but the restaurant itself is closed. Yes. Okay. So if you could submit to the city clerk's office, to Lori, okay. just an affidavit saying that you are reducing the hours to zero hours. Okay. And that effectively closes the restaurant. And that's, I get the email for this hearing, so I just do that through the email or there's some form that I... 
Okay. Oh, just to sign. Okay. okay. Thank you. Good. Everybody good? All right. Thank you, Izzy, very much. Item number 15, the Commission has requested a status request of the licenses for Off Larson Lane, LLC, DBA, the Kirkland Tap and Trotter, located at 425 Washington Street. The Commission requests an update pertaining to your intent for the licenses held for this closed business. Permission is required for the closure. Welcome. State your name for the record. Uh, yep. Tony Moz, Off Larson Lane and Kirkland Tap and Trotter. Um, so we closed the business in July. We are negotiating for a sale currently. Um, we have also entertained the idea of a rebrand, but given the current status of the sale, we're trying to move ahead with that. We're not in a place right now where I can make it public, as I think you can understand. That negotiation is ongoing. Private license? Yes. This is a private yeah. license. Well, there were a lot of sad faces when they heard Kirkland was closing, you know that. Mine was one of them. Yeah. 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 Certainly not the way we drew it up. But thank you for saying so. Um, any time frame? Do you have any time frame on it? Um, I mean, it's a negotiation. It's hard to speak. I mean, we would like to wrap this up sooner or later. I think we're in the last couple of weeks of finalizing the details, okay. assuming like something weird doesn't happen. But, but that's where we're at. All right, but the padlock's on the door, right? Yes. Okay. Could you, I also make the request that you send the affidavit to Lori? Sure. Bringing the hours down to zero. Okay. Um, it has no effect on your license. Yep. You still own that. We yep. have no control. You have a private license, but it effectively closes the restaurant Understood. and the bar. Okay. Understood. You work with Lori on that? Sure. Great. Thank you very much. Okay. Thanks very much. All right. Thank you. Thank night. you. Item number 16, the Commission has requested a status request for the licenses for Pokey for Me LLC, DBA Pokey Works, Works, located at 261 Elm Street. The Commission requires an update pertaining to your intent for the licenses granted for this business. The alcohol license was approved by the ABCC on 12 13 18. However, the requirements for issuing this license have not been completed as yet. Welcome and state your name for the record. Good evening. My name is Ryan Perkins. Um, I've been working with Lieutenant McGoffin and Lori. Uh, this was turned over from my investors to me to finalize. <laughs> uh, they had started the process of getting the license, and uh, they had thought that there was an easier process to just picking up the license. And I reached out to Lori, and she told me that there were still some. Um, pieces that needed to be finalized. Uh, and I've since done that. I've had the 304 inspection done. I've done the underage um, drinking course with Matthew Mitchell. Uh, I've submitted that to Lori. Um, and I will provide Lori with the liquor liability insurance this week uh, as I'm working to get that. And then it would, should just be the fee to finalize the license. So the intent is to keep the license. Um, thank you. Lori, what, what are the documents that we're still waiting for over and above the insurance? The liquor liability, the sign-offs for the 304 inspection, which Lieutenant McLaughlin is working on. Okay. Are there any other documents we're waiting for? The money, and then we can give them the license. Okay. Okay. All right. So we need this wrapped up quickly because technically you're operating without a license. If you haven't paid for the license, no, it's... No, we're not selling no, alcohol. I'm sorry. The intent is to sell alcohol. They have a common victual license. They yes. They applied after they got the common victual license. Yes. They applied for the alcohol license. Yes. It was approved. They haven't picked it up yet. Got it. Got it. And they pay for it when they pick it up. Yes. Sorry. No worries. <laughs> so, I mean, this makes sense for you guys to clear it up very, very quickly because you've already been approved for an alcohol license. You just haven't gotten it yet because you haven't taken care of the paperwork. Am I kind of making it sim too simple here? Or? No, I mean, I know it's tough running a business, but okay. No Lieutenant worries. McLaughlin, you had something? Yes, I uh, spoke to Laurie earlier. I did my inspection last week without ISD, but we are in the area tomorrow, and he will be going in with me to do his inspection, so we should be all set. I see no problems. Great. Anything else, Laurie? Good. Thank you so much for coming forward. Our best wishes. 
get it taken care of, pick up your license, start serving liquor. Appreciate it. All right, thank you. Thank you. Item number 17, the commission has requested a status request of the licenses for Pepe Boca Italian Specialty Market, Inc. DBA, Pepe Boca, located at 414 Highland Ave. The commission requires an updated per, per, update pertaining to your intent for the licenses granted for this business. An alteration of premises to increase your seating to 40 was approved by the ABCC on 820, and the reinstatement of hours was approved by the ABCC on 722. A new floor plan was submitted on 10-1 for 49 seats. The Licensing Commission, ISD, the Health Department, and the ABCC require approval of this increase in seating. Welcome. State your name for the record. Good evening, members of the Commission. My name is Rashi Monglik. I'm from McDermott, Quilty & Miller, representing the applicant. Giovanni Maione. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. The Welcome board. back. See you again. In a nutshell. You're going from 40 to 49, that's not what the ABCC approved. Right, we had suggested 49 at the, that hearing because we were combining those two addresses, those two parcels, which each had 20, and I think in, you know, so as a suggestion, we had offered 40 seats reasonably, but, you know, once you inspect the premises, you have an architect look at it, you know, we, it ended up being more that were available to, in terms of occupancy. So, um, you know, we're happy to operate at 40 until we submit an alteration of premises to you. Um, you know, if the license has 40 seats, obviously that would be what we would do since that, that's what the vote. Um, okay, so l let, me, let me try to get us straight from what we need and yeah. then we'll deliver it. I'm in contact with the ABCC to see if a new floor plan has to be submitted. I can get back to you on that and the commission if that needs to be done. If not, then it would just need to be approved by the commission, the health department, and the inspectional services division to make sure that the floor plan that they submitted to us, everybody else is on the same page. They all have the same floor plan. Did you hear? Well. Yes, I did. Okay. Okay. So if that's the case, the commission would need to approve the 49 seats, yes? Is that correct? What's it? What's it? We could approve it, but what does that do to the ABCC license? They approved 40. I will, I will check with the ABCC to see if they need anything. You could do a conditional approval. If the ABCC doesn't need to approve it, you could just send them a, a copy of the new floor plan if they don't need to approve it. Okay. The last time this item came before the commission, there were some issues with the fire department. In terms of the seating, where those seats were arranged, will the si fire department get in to inspect on this thing in a very short period of time? Not okay. Um, want to go with 40? You want to go with 49? If it's possible to go to 49, that'd be best for my client. But. but I as of approximately three weeks ago, after communicating with uh, the city clerk's uh, secretary here, uh, ISD and health department, a lot of the things have not yet been completed. The address change has, uh, with uh, engineering, the um, floor plan, I believe, was submitted to ISD, and I'm not sure about the approval on the occupancy. Health department had uh, nine issues. I think only one had been addressed. And myself and inspectional services, uh, building inspector, have not been in to inspect yet, which we will be by tomorrow if you're there. Uh, until I check with them tomorrow, I have no definitive answers on the ISD floor plans or the health department uh, remaining issues. With all due respect, uh, Mr. McGlough, that was, uh, I turned it into Ben today. The, uh, uh, the questions and all that, because he wanted it all through Citizen Serve Portal, and so I had I re-administered everything through the portal today. Okay, as we're just checking it now, I see nothing from the health department. All your building permits have been satisfied, but I know nothing about the the floor plan that was submitted, whether that's been approved or not. I'll well, follow. I had a problem with engineering having some new people there. They couldn't shrink down the plan, Donna, and that was the issue there uh, with the with the larger plan being shrinked down. 
I'll follow up with the health department tomorrow to see what they have and don't have and make sure they have everything either, you know, I'll try to, I'll go to citizen serve and make sure that everything is working up to date. Like I said, we'll, we'll do the inspection tomorrow. Um, I'm assuming you'll be there. If we pass it, then you'll be all set with ISC, the building inspector, and myself for the 304 license. The other issues you'll have to take care of. Okay. But I also notify the commission also. We will. Oh, okay, yes, absolutely, yeah. Okay, so how do we want to condition this approval? Pending SFD sign-off, inspectional services sign-off, health, health department sign-off. And ABCC. And interpretation from the ABCC on the question of whether or not they need a new floor plan. Have you got all that? Yeah. And how we're going to condition it? Commissioner. Because Commissioner McKenna isn't here, I will speak for him. And wouldn't the approval of ISD, the health department, and I, all that be just automatically a given for this? It is. It is a given that you don't get your license until those, but I want to reinforce it, that there is a secondary piece of this, which is the ABCC. If we change that floor plan, that's out of our control once it gets into them. If they see that, they may bounce it right back to us. And then just to clarify, if, if they do bounce it back, would you want us to submit an alteration of premises? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. Just that, to it has to be in sync. What we approve has to be in sync with what ABCC is looking at. Okay. All set? So the Board of Health, only one of the nine items was addressed. I, I missed the conversation. They have the rest of that, those items? To my knowledge, they have not. make sure that we're using a mic because people are watching. They can't hear you tonight. <laughs> so what else are we doing here? Conditioning the approval tonight for? On ISD approval for the floor plan, the health department, the Board of Health for their nine-step nine plan, and the 304 liquor license inspection by the fire department, as well as ISD. Thank you, Lieutenant McLaughlin. And, um, Lori, we're going to take care of getting something from ABCC on the floor plan. Okay. Okay. Everybody got that? Good? Okay. Counselor, you okay? Yes. Writing that down? We're good. All the notes, yes. Okay. So there is the update. I want to thank you both for coming back in. Thank you. Giovanni, I hope this is the last time I see you, and I hope you have much success down at Pepe Boca. It means a lot. Thank you so much. Great. Have a good night. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, ladies and gentlemen. We are on to item number 19. Is that correct? Sorry. Our action on number 17, does that require a vote? No. This is a status request. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Confirm. Yeah. Item number 19, Bo's Fam LLC DBA Manoa Pokey Shop, 300 Beacon Street. This is reopening. Existing common victualler. I don't want to read the whole thing, so I'm looking to see if they're here. Okay, if we can take item number 19, continue that to no, uh, the end of this meeting. If the applicant shows up, we'll take it up then. If not, November. Existing common victuallers, those are done, item number 20. Number 21 is done. Number 22 is Latitude Beverage Company, 20 Guest Street. Brighton, requesting approval of a special alcohol for the purpose of dispensing or selling alcoholic beverages for ninth annual 
Dia de los Muertos Block Party to be held outdoors at Taza Chocolate, 561 Windsor Street on Saturday, October 26th, 12 to 5. Is the applicant present? Let's leave it till the end of the meeting. Item number 23 is Brooklyn Boulders, 12A Tyler Street, Broadway, requesting approval of special alcohol license for the purpose of dispensing, selling for Harvard Graduate School of Design Halloween party to be held indoors at Brooklyn Boulders, 12A Tyler Street, on Friday, October 25th, 9 p.m. to 1 a.m. Take it away, Commissioner Allen. You surprised me there. <laughs> All right, um, could you give me a brief rundown of the event, please? Yeah, absolutely. So this is a event we've been hosting with the Harvard Graduate School of Design for the past three years running. Um, it is their annual Halloween celebration, so they are responsible for organizing the event, and then we act as host and venue for the space. Um, it's a student-run event uh, to celebrate Halloween. You have about 600 to 650 Harvard Graduate School of Design students coming in the craziest costumes you've ever seen. Um, for a fun dance party in the space. Uh, the event runs from 9 p.m. until 1 a.m. We have secured a police detail for this event, as we have done in the past, um, and we make sure that uh, the folks who are entering and exiting our facility are being mindful of our neighbors. We do this in partnership with our landlords at Summer Nova um, to make sure that there is clear and effective wayfinding and that folks who are entering the premises or leaving the premises are properly directed. Um, the Organizers of the event will be working with exquisite event service to secure all their catering and alcohol um, that will be tip certified bartenders and alcohol purchased through wholesalers. Make it easy. Uh, just to confirm, there will be no climbing during this event. No. Any event that I come to you about, generally there will not be climbing. <laughs> yes, but thank you for asking. Due diligence. Yes. Um, would the out, you mentioned Soma Nova, would this, um, sure you listed it in here would this be including the outdoor space this is not including the outdoor space this is all contained within brooklyn boulders understood thank you um lieutenant do you have any questions sergeant do you have any questions no. wonderful commissioner no questions. wonderful uh, make a move make a uh, public comment uh unless anybody else has anything else i'd like to make a motion to approve second all in favor Hi. Pleasure Thank doing you very much. You. Thank you. Thank you mm. Next up, item number 24, Merlin Entertainments, 598 Assembly Row, requesting approval of a special alcohol license for the purpose of dispensing and selling alcoholic beverages for adult night at Legoland Discovery Center, Boston, to be held indoors at Legoland Discovery Center, Boston, on the following Wednesdays, October 23rd, November 20th, December 18th from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Welcome. State your name for the record. Hi, uh, Brendan O'Toole. And Brendan, this is year number? This is five and change. Five and change for the event. And how successful is it? How many people do you expect? So far it's pretty good. We had to change the date on this one. This might be a little lighter than some of our normal ones, but normally we're running anywhere from 50 to 150. Okay, and who are you using for this one? Uh, so this one we've got uh, Bone Up Brewing is going to be coming in. Uh, Bone Up Brewing? Yep, they're just, brewing. Over the, they're just over the river in Everett. They're going to okay. be helping us out this one. And if you just double check and make sure with Laurie that they're on the list. Yep. Right. I, assume, I assume they are TIP certified. Yeah, I mean, they, 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 they do they, events all the time. Yep, they're they a licensed okay. brewer. They do pop-ups and fests and everything else. All right. If, all right, if we can just double check with the Perfect. city clerk. I have no issues. Commissioner Allen. Run it many times, no issues. Okay. Any members, what's that? Any members of the public wish to be heard? Seeing none, I'll make a motion to approve. All those in favor? Aye. Second it first. Second. <laughs> Faking me out. All those in favor? I'm seeing if you're still awake. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Thank have you. a good event. Next up, existing alcohol license. It is a private license. All forms, seven-day restaurant license. Requesting a change of manager. Ambisco, Inc., DBA, Red Bones, 55 Chester Street. Requesting approval of a change of manager from Nick Gregory to Darcy Gregory. Welcome. 
Please state your name for the record, and I'm sorry it's so late. <laughs> Thank you. Good evening. Uh, Darcy Gregory on behalf of Ambisco Inc. doing business as Redbones, requesting a change of management. And uh, I'm Rob Gregory, um, Redbones. And this is a pure and simple change of manager. My, my brother is Nick Gregory, and uh, he was the manager of record for the past, I think, five years, maybe? I mm -hmm. can't remember exactly. Mm -hmm. And he and his wife have moved back to California, where she's from. Okay. Rob, just for my own edification, what is the relationship between you and Darcy? Uh, I'm, she's my wife. <laughs> Family business. Darcy, I made him say it publicly. Yeah. Get it? <laughs> Any questions from the commissioner? Could you give a brief summary of your experience in the field? Uh, sure. I've been part of uh, Red Bones for about 20 years in different roles and capacities. Um, I worked with Nick closely when he was running the operations. I worked with the front of the house managers. Um, I come from uh, a family of restauranteurs, so I'm very familiar with all the ins and outs of the liquor license. Great, thank you. Any questions? All set. Any members of the public wish to be heard? Seeing none, make a motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Also, I'd like to uh, thank the commissioners and Lori uh, for the past uh, Oktoberfest when I had a mechanical breakdown and was unable to be here. And Thank you very much for approving. It was a great event. You're quite welcome. You're not getting in trouble on any of the permits we give you. So no, That was very nice. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Have a good night. Thank you very much. Uh, item number 27. Uh, I am going to forego reading, but this is an application for Petsikos Group. Um, it's an existing alcohol license. It's a city-issued license, all form, seven-day restaurant, requesting entertainment by patrons or performers, change of hours from 2 a.m. closing license and a 2 a.m. closing license. It is in the enhancement area. This is uh, Petsy Coast Group DBA Los Posadas restaurant located at 505 Medford Street. This item will be continued to the November 18th, 2019 licensing commission the ad did not appear in the paper. We will see this in November. Item number 28 is an application by Legal Seafoods, LLC, DBA Legal on the Mystic. This item will be continued to November 18th, the Licensing Commission per Attorney Heller's request. Item number 29, the Wine and Cheese Cask, Inc., DBA Wine and Cheese Cask, 407 Washington Street, requesting approval of a change of manager from Daniel Comerford to Stephen Mosier. Welcome. State your name for the record. Good evening. Meryl Golden Lim, representing the Wine Cask, Inc. And this is a pure and simple change of manager. Yes. And... Uh, I'm sorry, are you the attorney representing wine and cheese? Yes, I'm... I, I'm not the attorney. I'm the president of the company. Sorry. No problem. Didn't have time to look at it. I'm so sorry it's late, but okay. Any questions? Any issues with our friends at uh, Wine and Cheese Cask on Washington Street? We're all good? Commissioner, any questions? We're all set on the application. Any members of the public wish to be heard on the application? Seeing none, make a motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Sorry, Marilyn. It, it's long night. Sorry about that. Thank you very much. You're have welcome. Thank you. And we have one late item. It is the final item on the agenda. 
It is from the Friends of the Somerville Community Growing Center, Kara Brandon Wilson, 13 for Josephine Ave, requesting approval of a special alcohol license for the purpose of dispensing and selling alcohol beverages for the 25th anniversary of the Somerville Community Growing Center and the Somerville Garden Club to be held indoors at the Somerville Museum, 1 Westwood Road on Sunday, November 10th from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. Welcome. State your name for the record. Brandon Wilson, representing the Community Growing Center and Garden Club. Okay. And Brandon, you've been working with Laurie on this one. Correct. Are we all set? Yeah. yeah I forgot to print the application. My, okay. My apologies. But we're all set in terms of TIP certified, where the, where the alcohol is coming from, you're all set. You're working with Laurie on that, right? Correct. This sounds like a rollicking time. <laughs> the Friends of the Somerville Community Growing Center, the Garden Club at the museum. Correct. <laughs> Sergeant Shaley, do you want a police presence at this one? <laughs> but fire detail. <laughs> I'd invite all of you to come, but this is an appreciation for those that have volunteered for it's the last 25 years. It's basically an appreciation night yes, it for, is an, for exactly, all of the volunteers. For the volunteers over the last 25 years, and since I was involved in the founding of both of them. I well, please would... extend our congratulations to the Growing Center, to um, your friends at the Garden Club. Well done. I see them at the annual um, event down in Davis Square. I see them doing a lot of good work around the city, so okay. congratulations. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Any members of the non-existent public care to <laughs> a, a comment on the application? Seeing none, I'll make a motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you for staying late. Survival of the fittest here. <laughs> Thank you. Have a terrific event. Best wishes to all. Thank you very much. You. We are back to the agenda. So let's do this. Remind me what we continued. We continued um, seven and We did. Eight. Seven and eight. Item number seven. Commissioner Allen proposes a discussion on the adoption of the rough draft of the standing rules submitted by City Clerk John Long at the Somerville Licensing Commission on 4819. This will be used as a starting point. Additions and finalized language will be discussed. Commissioner Allen, what's your pleasure? Um, we provided a version which was um, John Long's with a addition for public comment. Um, we had some questions about what was required in there and what was redundant by virtue of the fact that we were adopting Robert's rules of order. It was stuff like a, um, specifying that you don't actually need to take a vote to adjourn. You don't need, a, like, rules for the chair. The chair rules are automatically in Robert's Rules of Order. Um, I'm not, I cannot remember what our actual issues were that we just said we would set aside and pick it up the next week. Maybe it had just, or next month, maybe it had just gotten late and we decided we were done. I believe you're exactly right. It got late, we were done, this is not critical. <laughs> But we have wonderful minutes to refer to. Right. <laughs> so let me just go back to the minutes. I don't know if you'll find those helpful or not. Yeah. Yeah, there was some discussion here, so I'm going to reiterate it from the, um, from the minutes, that there appears to be some folks out there who do not, um, who do not like uh, the name marijuana being used in when we're talking about cannabis because marijuana was first used um, very early on in the scare to try to scare people away from cannabis and it was used in a very derogatory way so my intent is to bring this forward in front of the city to see because we are controlled by the Cannabis Control Commission and there's a reason that they named it the Cannabis Control Commission. Yet there are places in the state documents where they still refer to it as marijuana. So I don't think it's critical. I do think it's something the commission may want to take a look at, uh, just to be sensitive to, uh, let me not be flipped, but we don't call our alcoholic beverage 
commission the hooch patrol <laughs> so let's be careful with this new product that we're interesting introducing into the city and let's um, see if we can add a little bit of uh, terminology change to it and that was one of the issues that I had brought up um, and then we said the item will be continued you also made a proposal to the marijuana policies and procedures um, there are a bunch of things in those minutes that pertain to what we were trying to do so I would say, if, because we don't have Commissioner McLaughlin here tonight, and he had some things to add, um, <laughs> McKenna, I'm sorry, John McKenna. Um, so we have two items here. We have item seven, we have item eight, that both pertain to administrative changes. And I know John had input on both of those and I those can be continued to next month and I would not be opposed we have a lot of stuff to do next month though I, I would not be opposed to either but seeing as we have um, accomplished one thing that I wanted to accomplish this year which is the revamping of the fees and then the institution of late fees because what I'm trying to do for the commission and for the city clerk's office is to stop some of this habitual um, repetitive stuff that comes in and people are late and then it causes the city clerk's office to get backed up. It causes confusion at our commission hearings. So that's what I'm trying to do, I accomplish that. I also need to get the recreational um, cannabis stuff f under control and in our policies and procedures since we're now starting to administer these applications. I, so I think I'd rather concentrate on those, if that's agreeable. I would agree. Rules of, you know, yeah, standing rules would be nice to have, but clearly we're okay without them. We implemented a standing rule of two minutes for public comment, despite the fact that technically we don't have anything like that, but no one's going to complain. Like, that's a, that's a common stand, that's a common press. That's right, and one could argue it's always at the discretion of the chair. Fair. So, um, as long as I'm not saying this side of the house gets two minutes and that side of the house gets seven minutes, I think we're okay. Yeah, um, and I would strongly agree that yes, we, we cannot issue licenses when we do not have rules for them. Those need to be handled. Well, rules safety. are fluid. The uh, policies and procedures of this commission are very fluid. So we have to operate on what we have. And we do have ones. And, and I would agree that like we, <laughs> <laughs> and we can pass the rules with the statement of this is not set in stone, this is not, but if nothing else, there's a, there's a core set that we are all more or less in consensus on, and not including anything else at the point of the first adoption does not mean that they will not be added at a later date. That's right. We can add things at a later date. We can change things at a later date. So what's your pleasure with item number seven and eight? I would move to... Let's... Let's just be honest about it. Let's move to continue number seven to the January meeting, and let's move number eight to the November meeting. Because I think I would much rather discuss the standing rules when we have less on our docket, and I know the November meeting is gonna be packed. Well, not being, not being positive on whether or not you can jump these things into the following year. Oh. Why don't we just move them to both, move them both to November and then we can figure it out in November. Okay, that's acceptable. We have time, we have time. So what would you like to do? Make a motion to? Um, make a motion to continue these to the next meeting. Commissioner Allen makes a motion to move item number seven, item number eight, and continue them to the November 18th meeting. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion approved. Uh, Any other business before the commission? Items Seeing number 19 and 22 were continued to the end of the meeting. Item number 19, Bosefam LLC. The applicant is not here. November meeting. Item number? 22. Item number 22, Latitude Beverage Company, 20 Guest Street. The applicant did not appear. Move to the November meeting. Uh, that will be past the date of the event. So. 
Well, then the, the applicant does not have approval. Denied. Denied. Make a motion to deny item number 22. Is there a difference between denying this and not approving it in term? Well, in the citizen service system, I would put it in, I believe is denied. There's no other option. It's either approved or denied. And the commission has the right to deny for not appearing. Fair. Okay, I'm happy with that. Denied. Denied. Okay, uh, that looks like we have completed the agenda. Thank you, everybody. This meeting is adjourned. <laughs>